What is up, Rotor Grinders? You know, I missed my cue. My apologies. We're just kind of standing there. I'll tell you what happened, Chop, and, you know, we're doing this live. But I have the uh, the YouTube page open, <laughs> and the YouTube page is like 10, 15 seconds behind our live page, and I still hear the music playing, and I'm like, oh, I'm waiting for the YouTube music to kick in. I didn't realize that was the YouTube music, and uh, there, there lies the, the screw-up. So what's up, Rotor Grinders? Uh, welcome. It's a... Uh, it's another. If you, if you missed today's early slates, this is the sequel. This is part two. The sequel is always uh, lives up to the original. The sequel was kind of disaster. We're still waiting for a couple of games to start as far as the early slates. Uh, you're still waiting for first pitch for Philadelphia, Cincinnati. They're holding out Kansas City and Baltimore. That was a one o'clock first pitch start. Um, four hours later, we're still waiting. We'll see if you're if you're uh, messing with the early slate. But now tonight, Chop, the sequel is always better than the original. Rarely, actually. Godfather 2, I suppose. Um, yeah, Chop, we got a four-gamer because we lost one game already. Mets, Tigers, they are not playing baseball this evening, and we're not fully out of the weeds as far as weather because Chief Interologist Kevin Roth, he does have uh, – it's yellow. Yellow in Washington. I'll go ahead and drop this in chat for the people. Uh, orange yellow for the Cubbies. So potentially some uh, weather issues that are lurking out there, but nothing nothing the likes of what we had earlier today. But uh, Chop? We're talking baseball. Of course, some people tune in for basketball. They've kind of learned by now this sort of a, you know, with the baseball season, basketball season crossing over. Uh, we're doing baseball first. We yield the crunch time. Crunch time coming in at 6 o'clock because the schedule is all sorts of jumbled. 6.45 first pitch for our first game for baseball. So we wanted to get crunch time enough to time to talk baseball and basketball. Therefore, um, we're doing a little bit of an early crunch time jump in. Chief meteorologist Kevin Roth, you got Keith Eister. Keith, I believe, will be talking basketball. And you got Dave Potts, cheese is good. You know, from such things as the Million Dollar Musings, not ironically named. He's won a million dollars, not once, but twice. As has, uh, Chop, you've won it twice, right? I think you won it two times, at least once. I'm pretty sure it's twice. What's up, Chopper? How are, uh, how are things? You excited to talk a little bit of a little bit of baseball for Gamer? And it's your Astros. I'm sure you're excited about that. Not really. Um, no. <laughs> as an Astros fan, we don't, we don't really start tuning in until about August. Around August, and then it gets a little bit spicy, you know. Dean, that's just the you got a fast about, pass to the playoffs, basically. Yeah, like, we're not really worried about. I mean, I, I I know some guys out there jumping around, jumping for joy on April third that their team is four and two and they <laughs> exceeded all expectation. I'm not worried about it that much. But anyway, number one, Dean, I want to just like give a shout out to this this new shirt, Dean, with this new logo. How about this for a polo? Is this not a good looking polo or what, Look man? At you. You're looking sharp. I, request, I requested a polo with the new logo on it, and sure enough, it came in the mail, and man, it looks good. I I, I like I'm liking it quite a bit. Love the color. You have that kind of pool, Chuck. You can make a request, and it's just it's somebody's made it happen was already in the process. Well, you know, we do have a person who is in charge of clothing and stuff to get you out whatever you need whatever you need that person will get you so you know all you gotta do is request in the slack there's a slack we have dean it's a it's a roto grinders slack for work it has all i don't think it's specific it. just for clothing though i think that, i think they're versatile but it has a channel for everything you want if you want to look at baseball cards there's a baseball card channel in there yes so what about top like shots it, yes yes there's a top shot everything you need is in that Pretty quiet these all days. you gotta do is find the right person but uh you got that going for us. Uh, we got some bad weather here today. Yeah, this weather's terrible today. I, I I totally messed up by playing the early slate. Then I kind of got busy and didn't realize. Well, this game rained out. The Atlanta game rained out, and yeah. Now this other now this other game hadn't even started yet. Yeah, I don't you had know, time man. though, Chop. You pivoted to I Philadelphia, didn't. I assume, right? Uh, oh, you just I, missed it. I didn't because I was uh. Like I said, I was tied up. I actually didn't even – you had to talk to me about the show and the show format here, you know. Earlier today, I wasn't even prepared for it, Dean. And so it's crazy like that, but it is what it is, man. We'll uh, we'll figure it out on the fly. Really small slate. Lots of time to kill. We can talk about whatever you want to talk about, Dean, really. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of stuff will come up organically. If you guys are in chat, do it that like button. Do subscribe. Do turn on those notifications so you know when we go live. Also – if you want to win yourself a week free, a week free of Rotor Grinders Premium, you know how you go about doing that. You get your name thrown on the wheel. How do you get your name thrown on the wheel? Go to the Discord channel, rotorgrinders.com backslash Discord. Go to the live stream chat channel and then just uh, hit the avatar. I think producer Steve went ahead and already dropped the link and then he'll take your name, throw it on the board. We're going to spin the wheel today. We're spinning the wheel today at four. No, no. 
That's chops time at 545 on the East Coast. Again, crunch time coming at about like 555, 6 o'clock. Dave Potts, uh, baseball, Kevin Roth, baseball, weather. Uh, and then you got uh, some basketball going down as well. Pretty big basketball slate uh, as we wind down. I think there's – I want to say it's next Sunday is when the season officially ends. I'm pretty certain. So we're about 10 days left uh, of NBA. Is that, is that oh, right, that'd be fantastic, man. Phew, good. I thought we had to go all through April. This That's fantastic news, Dean. I appreciate that. You know, I also, Dean, I want to, I want, I want to uh, defend you here, Dean. I want to defend your honor. I want to lay down, lay down oh. my jacket across the puddle for you, Dean. There's a lot of people in chat right now saying you really screwed up the intro, like you really butchered it. I want on your behalf, Dean. <clears throat> on your behalf, I want to say I was also caught off guard. The music yes. just, the music just <laughs> stopped suddenly. Like I've never heard it cut off that quick before. So on your behalf, I'll say it was a, it was an odd musical intro and that kind of probably threw you off because it threw me off too but uh yeah there's a lot of people saying you really butchered that intro man i'll, I'll take the fall it, it's on me but again I, I thought i explained it uh and it's you know it's the behind the scenes stuff but it's just i i thought i was hearing music from our vi our video version as opposed to the youtube version when i'm hearing the youtube version it's like you know in space balls this is what's happening now this is that was that's what was happening like 15 seconds ago and I'm just like staring at a wall for 15 seconds and 15 seconds of staring at a wall to start a show probably feels like two minutes to a viewer. So I, 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 it's right. They're rightfully so calling me out. I understand. It's perfectly fine. Um, all right. So we got a four gamer tonight, Chop. Four gamer as far as baseball. I'm assuming weather wise, we're going to be fine when it comes to Colorado, Chicago. Uh, when it comes to Washington, I know Washington has done some goofy things historically, but you know, Roth has them as, as, a, as a straight yellow, no, no, no red, no orange. I'll go ahead and read this. I know I dropped this in chat for the people, but if you don't want to read, I can read it for you. Uh, this is Roth speaking. I think there's a decent window between storm systems right when this game is expected to play. We'll need to double check the timing of both the early departing storm and the late arriving one, but I'm cautiously optimistic. Temps in the 50s, winds left to right at 15 miles per hour. It's a pretty big crosswind, but uh, yellow, so I assume that's going to be a go. Orange, yellow for the Cubbies. Um, off and on as far as light rain, snow showers potentially, but never anything too heavy or long-lasting. If they decide to play it, then I think they likely play without a stoppage. They just need to make a call. They just need to make a call whether or not they're likely to play with a temperature in the 30s, light precipitation, and 15-mile-per-hour winds. If they do play, it's great pitching weather with winds in from left at uh, 15 miles per hour. And that's kind of the tricky part of the slate. One of the tricky parts, Chop, is that – you know, no no ballpark is more affected by wind than Wrigley. Uh, winds are blowing in, and it's not hot. It is freaking cold, possibly some snow in the 30s. But, like, we have two of the more vulnerable pitchers, right, um, as far as, far as and I, I want to play some, uh, some Cubbies. And we saw the Cubs thrive last night in spite of the weather. Now, I think this is a little bit worse hitting weather than it was last night, but it wasn't optimal. Cal Quantrill, though, he will, he's bad enough that I think he can kind of overcome it. Luke Little is expected to draw a star here for the Cubs. I think it's kind of sort of somewhat an opener. I don't know if we've officially got that. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, Little is officially the starter. Um, and then there's a, kind of a prospect Brown that may be coming in. And I know Dave, I'm curious Dave's thoughts, and it's not very deep as far as the pitchers, but I don't think it's completely insane that the play – I don't. I think Brown actually, if he can get you a couple innings, and if he comes in like the third, fourth, fifth, or around the fifth, you know he can get the he can steal a W and get a couple strikeouts. And you know if you want like eight points for four K as an SP two, just because you know it helps me get some bats. And spoiler alerts: I'm I'm gonna want to roster um, Tyler Glass now, who's like pretty clearly the best pitcher on the slate. And we do live in the world of salary cap, and I want some hitters as well. So it's something I'm thinking about. Like the, I don't. You could be signing up for a zero and Brown was terrible to start the season for what it's worth. But now he gets uh, the Rockies assuming he pitches and a couple innings. He's probably the long man has not pitched. I think since the 31st, I want to say or the 30th, I think it was the 30th. So he's pretty well rested. What is a, uh, what is your approach here? Chop as far as pitchers and you know, Javier's solid. Uh, Toronto has been scuffling out the gate. No Toronto lineup just yet. Listen, I missed it. Chris Bassett, the hound perfectly fine, but you we know, do some tough. We do have the Toronto lineup. It is it is as we thought it was going to be. No surprises. Okay. But did it just come in? Did I did I miss it? Yeah. It just, just came, came in. in. Just came in. Fresh off the presses, Dean. 
Yeah. Uh, Springer, Guerrero, Bichette, Turner, Varsho, Kirk, uh, Kiermaier, Kiner, Falefa, and Biggio. Still waiting for Dodgers and Giants. No surprise there. That game happens later. But we have every every other lineup. That Dodgers Giants game goes down at what 10 10 on the East Coast. Your approach to pitching, Chop, um, like how do you not play Tyler Glass now? I know he's gonna be crazy popular, but like whatever, I'll be different elsewhere. Um you almost have to play glass now, I think. Like it's pretty close to a must play on this kind of slate. It's only we're down to four games now, and half the pitchers on here are just either bad or they're just going to pitch a couple innings, you know, and that's their, that's their limit there. So yeah, I think you almost got to play glass now in any, any format except for really large, large field GPPs where, you know, maybe you can take an approach and go with a couple of more mid tier guys, but I, I agree. It's hard to get away from that guy on this particular slate, man. And it's, uh, it's just the way, it's just the way it shapes up and he's not really, so much more expensive than everybody else that you you know have a hard time playing him so yeah you're gonna have to play him but we can we'll talk about the other guys here and, and the good qualities of the other guys and and figure things out as we go but glass now looks like the clear-cut guy where in a cash game you got to have him in the small single entry stuff i think you got to force him in there and the only the only uh form of game where you're probably think about going elsewhere is the really large field stuff 3-2-3 Sierra dating back to last season, 32.3% K rate, awesome. 16.4% swing and strike rate, that's awesome as well. Keeps the ball on the ground. Um, you know, he's he's been, this is his third start, I mean, as far as, like, building up the arm, right? He had that extra start out there in uh, Korea. 62% um, is the ownership on DK. You got to roster 25% of these dudes. You know, you got to roster two out of eight, and I guess if you want to bring Brown into it, that's two out of nine because the Cubs are kind of sort of two pitchers, but not really. Um, that's just sort of the way I'm looking at it. Up next is Mitch, uh, Mitch Keller, who, uh, there was rumblings about him, like in spring training, his velocity being down a tick or so, uh, he took care of the Marlins, but everybody took care of the Marlins. Marlins, I think are still over the season. I want to say they're over seven. You were talking about not getting excited or getting overly excited. If you're a Marlin fan, are you panicking? I mean, yeah, I guess you already, you kind of assumed, right? This is what you kind of expected, not over seven and not getting swept at home in a four game series versus the Pirates, but. It's pretty rough for the Marlins out the gate. Um, yeah, Keller's the second most popular guy than Cal Quantrill. It's just the ballpark is mostly, and the price is what's appealing there. Cal Quantrill is not somebody I want to roster, but just the nature of the slate, just kind of the way things set up. I'm willing to roster him, but I will absolutely hold my nose if I do it. Where are you at as far as SP2? Okay, SP2. If you're asking me about SP2... It's not Keller, you know. So uh, are you asking me about Keller or are you asking me about SP2? Take it however you know, this okay. is a it's a free flowing okay. conversation. So if I'm having uh if I'm if I'm looking down the list of these guys playing, like Keller is in the mix, uh, because he is one of the guys who's actually if he is halfway decent tonight, is gonna get his innings and it's not a it's not an imposing matchup or anything. So he's in the mix. But he's not my SP2. The guy I'm leaning on right now as the starting pitcher, too, is Christian Javier. Uh, that's the guy that I go number two. And I say that because – Homer? Uh, yep. A little bit of home. But the thing about being a homer, Dean, if you can separate your heart from your head, you see so much of a certain team and, and so much of a certain certain guys that you can start to see see things in a different light. And if you can separate your heart from that, then you know when they're good and when they're not good. And uh, for me, I look at Javier, and I saw him all spring training, all off season. First of all, he looks in as good a shape as he's been in the major league. And I know that's a cliche, but he really looked, <laughs> he, he took the time to get his body right this off season. So he got that going for it. But all spring, it was all about he's got to have another pitch. He's got to find another pitch. He can't survive with a two pitch mix as a starting pitcher. Well, he did at least in, in the, in the uh, first game of the year, the, the changeup was a big focus in the off season for him. And um, he threw quite a bit of it in week one in his first start. And he had great success. He had pitched a great outing. Now the Astros blew the game and they've blown several games this year already, 
uh, like where four they, or five, it seems like that they the should Yankees have got one. multiple times. Yeah. yeah, that they should have one, and it's uh, and I also chalk that up to uh, I'm going to chalk it up to uh, early, early manager, first time manager, never having done this before, and he made some mistakes. Hopefully, he gets in the groove because otherwise, we should have just kept Dusty. But I think he's going to be better than that. But but Javier went out there and shut down the Yankees for the most part, and it was uh, on the back of that that changeup. So. That was a big focus in the offseason, and it looks like it's paying off. He threw that pitch 28% of the time, roughly 28% of the time in his first outing. He threw that pitch 4% of the time last year. He got a new grip with it, came out. They did not hit it. Like That pitch right there makes his uh, makes his slider and his four-seamer even better. So I'm willing to believe that he's the real deal, and you got to remember, you know, this guy was part of a couple of no-hitters the year before that. He's got the stuff to do it. If you throw in an extra pitch and it's successful and he, and he can control it, he's going to be an ace, and a real ace. So I'm going to go and lean on Javier as my SP2 because uh, I think it's real. I don't think it's fake. I, th- I think it's a real deal. How about you, you guys already knocked out your no-hitter uh, for the season. Blanco threw a no-hitter for y'all out of uh-huh. nowhere. 30-year-old Blanco. Okay, so I need to figure out what's going on. I need to figure out what is going on with the pitching coach down there because Blanco was another guy who came up with the change up here in spring training and added that to his arsenal of, like, he can't. they said he can't be a starting pitcher because not enough pitches. He's got, like, two pitches. Really, he throws one pitch, like, 56% of the time. So they say you got to get a new pitch. They gave him the change up. He changed the grip on it, and he looked – and he pitched a – he looked phenomenal, man. Like he was like left-handers could not will not hit that changeup if he's locating it like that. So maybe it's something with the coaching staff. But both these guys added that changeup, and they both look a lot better. So yeah, a little no-no, a little no-no for you, Dean. Did you have that on your bingo card, Ronel Blanco? No-no. I did not. I did not. I had my pitchers actually did good that night. That was the night where like it was like no options, and he, I, you know, he was I think reasonably popular just because the options were poor, and I did not have Blanco. I, I was watching parts of that game, and I didn't, I didn't even realize he had a no-hitter. It's like the seventh or eighth. I'm like, well, when did this happen? It just kind of snuck up on me because I remember I think he walked the first hitter, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And then beyond that, just everybody else got out. Um, I Pictures I'm not rostering, and I don't make a ton of lineups. How many lineups are you making tonight, Chop? Sometimes you have a little, little bit of fun and make 100 or so. Jeez. Are we doing that or not necessarily? No, no, no. no. Just one. This is, this is a mess. Okay. This is, weather's a mess. The slate's a mess. One lineup, Dean, one lineup. Okay, so we're not playing Trevor Williams that one lineup, right? Trevor Williams is not a guy I would, even if I was in GPPs, I would probably be w- w- way underweight on the field if I had him at all. No, Trevor Williams is not a guy I'm interested in. Yeah, um, you know, the K's aren't good on the season, you know, back, going back to last season, strikeouts are what, 17%, 13% versus lefties, 21% versus righties. Um, looks like Pittsburgh is throwing, what, about five five uh, lefties at him? O- O'Neal Cruz, uh, Reynolds, Sawinski, Tellez, four. All right, but still, plenty. And even against righties, his strikeouts aren't very good. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to roster Trouble Williams at all. Like, we're seeing, we're showing 20% just because, again, you have to kind of roster somebody. Um, Kyle, I mean, I would almost take my chances. On, I would take my chances on Kyle Harrison first, just kind of bet on the talent, but I don't really want to pick on the Dodgers, but I think he's got a live arm and he's actually like good. And well, he's not a complete project and he's going to be up and down and probably is down today, but I think his upside is at least a tick higher. Or so when it comes to, to comparing him versus Williams, Williams is crazy cheap too. Bassett's, um, fine professional pitcher, right? You know, Houston pretty top heavy as far as our lineup falls off a little bit in the back end. Uh, vulnerable to lefties, and the two best hitters for Houston, as you know, are the lefties. So I don't really want to pick Bassett. And if I'm playing a bunch of lineups, sure. I'm guessing you're not prioritizing Bassett. He's not amongst your top two. You kind of already mentioned it. You probably already have your shell lineup, but good to go. It's it's Glass now and it's Javier. Is that correct? Yeah, I think I'm playing Glass now, Javier. But, uh, you know, he, as far as ranking him, he would be number three for me, Chris Bassett. And that's main, that's a lot of that is due to lack of options anyway. But, I put him at number three. He's just like you said, a solid pitcher. There's nothing spectacular about him. But also, this Houston lineup has a real, real ability to just go completely flat. And so that you know, he could uh, he could definitely benefit from that. Uh, he wasn't bad his first outing. The numbers look a lot worse than uh, he ended up looking a lot worse than what I thought he pitched. So I'm willing to go back to him and 
Uh, not to mention Houston at home is like terrible these days. I don't know what happened to them, man. They don't they don't win at home anymore. But took away the trash cans. I think that's what happened. Wait a minute, Dean. What? No, come on now. What? No, stop it. They're really good on the road. You got trash cans on the road. You saying they have trash cans on the road? And the uh, because I don't know, man. Somebody's uh, got to really, do the splits. You know, they say that's like I've heard theories. It's the batter's eye, and it's the uh, kid. All that. I don't know, man. But they're not hitting it at home, so I think Bassett's in play just for that fact. But yeah, he he would rank number three for me, but that's only because it's a really small, weird slate and bad pitching, but. You know, they have a tendency to really shell up at home and not hit very well. And so I think that keeps him in the mix, Chris Bassett does. It's interesting. You look at the plate IQ and the first five guys for Houston, Altuve, Alvarez, Tucker, Bregman, Diaz. Diaz, by the way, looks like he's, I mean, he had, what, 23 homers last year. He's got some, he's got some pop. He had that double dong game earlier in the season, liking him a good bit, taking a step forward. All these guys are in the green. Uh, you know, they, they walk a ton, they don't strike out, except for Diaz. Diaz doesn't walk. Beyond that, though, everybody else in the green as far as ISO, the power, Woba, strikeouts, you know, the highest guy as far as striking out is 18.5% is Alvarez. And Altuve is a 10% walk guy. Alvarez a 13% walk guy. It's just really, really tough to get through these first five. Then it kind of falls off. And if Ray was out, you got Singleton in there. Yeah, there you go, D. You dry, you, you buried the lead. The uh, poor Bassett has to face a lineup that doesn't have that statue in it called Jose Abreu. Yeah, I, I – I don't like Abreu. I like he, he, he's done, right? It's basically over for him. It took him like nine months last year to hit a one home run. Uh, but Singleton, I don't think is the answer either. Uh, he, he, you're, you're expecting some power, but it's just 84 at bats. But the he, ISO is 41. Like, what is that? He that's, has that's a sneaky, uh, sneaky good eye, though. He will walk. He'll walk a lot. 12 percent walks. So he has a sneaky good eye, and yeah, he can turn on the ball. He's supposed to, but yeah, it's a. I think at this point it's probably better than a Brady, right? Like, you know, Brady struggling. He when he gets out, he'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, but that's what it is. You know what happened there, Dean? We got plenty What's of time that? here. Plenty of time. What happened was, for some reason, we won the World Series, right? 2022, we come back. Jim Crane inexplicably does not like James Click, the GM who, I don't want to say he built it all because his predecessors – really laid the foundation. But James Click made some great moves, fantastic moves, not just financially, but bringing into – like he he traded away Miles Straw basically for Yiner Diaz, who you talked about, plus – The Cleveland? Plus, yeah, plus uh, plus they got Phil Maton in that deal too, who helped them win a World Series uh, and get to a World Series before that. But he made some great moves along the way. They fired him, and then they went like three months without a GM. And during that three months – <laughs> they left Jeff Bagwell. Love Jeff Bagwell as a former player. GM's not his thing. He was the interim GM. He signed Jose Abreu. I didn't know that. Three years, like twenty million a year. Oh, and by yeah. the way, he also extended Rafael Montero three years, thirty million when we didn't <laughs> have a GM. So he totally Jeff Bagwell butchered this whole situation. But so he got to eat that right now. And when that's all done, then we'll be we'll be in better shape. But that's a little side note. What happened there? All these these bad bad contracts like that are all about. Uh, Jeff Bagwell stepping in when we didn't have a GM. Carolina guy wants to know your favorite single entry uh, fan build GPP large field uh, starting pitcher. Is it just glass now and, and figure out a way to be different beyond that? Uh, no, if it's, if I'm going single entry, large field, large field on FanDuel, got one pitcher and I'm looking at these ownership numbers, I'm probably going to go to take a stab at Christian Javier. Who can okay. who can who can have just as much upside as Tyler Glass now when he's on? And I take that chance at these ownership uh, these ownership numbers. Forty seven percent for Glass now on Fanduel. Of course, on Fanduel you're only rostering rostering one pitcher. We got Keller at seventeen percent and Javier at thirteen. I like that call. I would definitely play Javier before I would play Keller. Johnson uh, Eric Johnson in chat asking about Kirby. Kirby's pitching right now, or maybe he's gone because Cleveland was beating him up. So. Not sure. Um, Damn, Lip, what, you wait, brother. That game's already started, brother. This guy's in the wrong slate. So, uh, somebody let me know. Is uh, is they, they still waiting out there for, as far as uh, what, was it Kansas City? No, Baltimore. Is Baltimore still waiting to play? Have they, have they called it? Well, what's the story there? Uh, I've not seen a call on that. And Philadelphia, I think, is still waiting out to play ball as well. But um, somebody was asking about the four K cheapy. And I, again, it, it can go it can go the wrong way, but Brown is probably the quote unquote long guy for Chicago. 
Um, what about going Glasnow and and, and uh, Brown? Is that something you considered? Did you not need the salary? Uh, do we have confirmation? No. Well, see, that kind of throws a wrinkle in. But yeah, I mean, I get, if we knew the the uh, agenda with their pitching tonight, sure, absolutely. It's a good matchup. I'd take a shot at it uh, if I knew what was going on. I have no problems with that in GBVs. So let me just go ahead and pull this up, right? I'm pulling up Chicago and just sort of their usage when it comes to their bullpen. Wanted to see Brown. Yeah, so Brown threw 44 pitches on the 30th. Uh, Jose Cuellas threw 37 pitches yesterday. He's not going to be used almost definitely. Uh, Smiley looks like kind of like a long man. Like he threw 19, well, 19 pitches on Monday. That's not really a long man necessarily. Just trying to think. It looks like Brown, who's only pitched one game in the last like six or seven, probably most likely to step in. He's they, rarely do you hear like, oh, they're going to, they usually don't announce like the bulk guy afterwards. Sometimes you get it. Sometimes you don't. But it, the suggestion is there. I, I'm, I'm willing to do it. And also, like, if he gets you a zero, okay, whatever. You make up for it when you have, like, bets because you have the money for Mookie Betts and it's a homer. And there's 14 points right out the gate. You can't guarantee that, obviously. But, you know, four games late. I, I'm, I'm willing to do it. Would I do it in a cash game? Almost definitely not. But, you know, in a tournament? Sure, why not? And what if he actually goes in for a couple innings? And Colorado's terrible. The, the weather's good for pitching. And uh, what if he comes in like the third, fourth, and fifth, like, you know, something like that. And then he gets a, a cheap win, 14 points. It's possible. You can tell yourself that story. And if it gives you like seven or five, even five is like, okay, I think, on this slate. Um, anything, you, anything else you want to say as far as pitchers before we talk about some stacks? I know we, we're going to play our stack game again that people enjoyed it so much last time. But uh you know, we're, we're going to be running it back. Chop, it was your categories. We're going to have some fun with that. And, again, if you guys are just joining us now, NBA coming in about a half hour, give or take. You got Keith knocking that out. You got Roth coming in with letter about a half hour. You also have Dave Potts, Cheese is Good, coming in uh, crunch time about a half hour or so. But in 15 minutes, we're going to be doing the drawing to get one week free of RG Premium for one lucky winner. How do you get yourself registered? Go into the live stream chat channel, the Discord. That's rotogriders.com backslash Discord. Live stream chat channel. And the directions are very, very simple. Just hit that button and you get to play. Chop, anything else as far as pitchers? Uh, no, I think we covered them all. All right. We did this the other day as far as our stacks. Um, and it, we're going to do it like on the smaller slates. This is a small slate. This is a pretty easy one to knock out. Just eight teams, Chop. Um, you know, we top the bottom. Top is we do a little bit of tiers, right? We're going to do a little bit of tiers here, Chopper. Producer Steve's going to throw it up on the screen. We'll, we'll kind of go game by game or team by team. Uh, do you want to explain your categories, Chop? Because I, I left it up to you. Like, however you want to do your categories, have a little bit of fun with it, show off a little bit of personality. Um, yeah. You know, give me a quick explanation as far as why your categories are your categories. Yeah, so here's my categories. From the best to the worst. I would say, you know, uh, when I think about sitting down and watching a movie, what really gets me? What gets me going and what makes me not want to <laughs> what makes me want to throw the popcorn away and, and and run away and not watch it? Right. Like so my best of the best. You give me a Denzel movie. I'm golden, man. Like he's got I can't even it's hard to even make a list of his top 10 movies because he's got so many damn good ones. And you would just just so you give me Denzel in a movie and I'm sitting down watching. No doubt. I'm all in on that thing. All right, my next tier, really, really good. Benicio Del Toro drug movies. He is the king of the drug Traffic. movie. Uh, he's been in a bunch of them. You have to Google some right now, but he's been in several that are just like phenomenal. Well, he was in that one uh, recently, too. With ah, Man, it was really good. Uh, with Justin yeah. Timberlake, the one that was on Netflix? Sicario, Sicario. What oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's the king of the drug movie, right? So I love it. You give me a bit Benicio del Toro, and I see he's in a drug movie. Use those I'm, prob I'm probably in that sucker, man. So that's a good one. Now, like middle of the road, could be good, could be bad, but I don't really have an opinion. Nicolas Cage movies. He's got some good. I love Gone in 60 Seconds. Hate some of the other ones. Like there's some good ones. There's some bad ones. Uh, pretty middle of the road on it. It is what it is, man. I love the Gone in 60 Seconds is the first Nick Cage movie you think of, but go ahead. <laughs> then we get down to uh, 
Oof, this is going to be a tough one. Like, maybe I, I kind of don't want to do this. Scorsese, when he drops a three-hour movie. Uh, like how some of them. <laughs> God, I could not barely keep my eyes open through the Irishman or whatever that crap was a few years ago. But, like, yeah, three-hour, listen, buddy, Scorsese. If some of the movie, best movies ever. If you can't get your movie under three hours, just make it a mini series. Give it three, four, five episodes. We don't need to see this. We don't need to sit down in the theater or at home for four hours in a row. Did you like The Wolf of Wall Street? That was not a three hour movie. It was a three hour movie. No way. No. It was exactly three hours. It okay. just flew by. Oh, now you when I by the time you it's fast not a technicality. The credits, it's a three hour movie. Nah, nah. I don't think so. <laughs> that wasn't a gotcha. I, I don't. I, I'm gonna have to look that one. Up. Let me see. Run time on. I'm, I'm looking right at it. I have the interwebs too. The department. Yeah, but see, you fast forward movie? through the credits. I don't know. Two hours fifty nine <laughs> minutes. We're good. I'm still good. But it's not. It's not at the bottom of the category anyway. It's just like, oh man. Like, will I sit through? What was that one that, that just got released with uh, Leo? Killers DiCaprio? of the Flower Moon. It's not a bad movie. It's good. You know that, that's why this isn't the bottom of the list. But it's three yeah. hours. Like, oh man, I don't. I kind of don't want to do this. That's why it's you know before the absolute worst. Now the absolute worst is no. the vast majority of Academy Award winning snoozers. Like, I don't know what they're doing. Like, there's a few. Don't give me I – don't, I don't need the exception to the rule, Dean. Like, I know there's a few movies that were that get nominated or win Academy Awards for best movie that are pretty good movies and I, entertaining. But the vast majority of them are just artsy-fartsy terrible things, man. I don't want to sit there. You, get, you give me an Academy Award winning movie, I'm, pro, I'm falling asleep. I just don't want to do it. So that's my bottom tier here of stacks. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. Is it can't do it. No, no doubt. If they, if it, if I miss a good movie, so be it. I miss a good movie. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna. You missed a lot. Suffer. Yeah. I'll suffer. No, I don't think I have really. But anyway, that's where. So that's where the five tiers fall in, right there, Dean. All right. There are a few like the artist. If you want to make that argument, yeah, can, yeah. I, I'm on board with some of these, but so, most of these are good. Most of them are pretty good. I'm. I'm I kind of pulled them up here. Parasite was incredible. If, you, if you've never seen Parasite, you're doing things wrong. But uh, all right. Well, let, let's uh, give the stacks that coincide with your with your tiers. Very first stack we're going to talk about. Uh, how interested are you in? Let's talk about the Pirates. The Pirates taking on Trevor Williams. What tier are they in? Uh, Pirates. Okay, so Trevor Williams not particularly good, uh, not good. Uh, but this Pirates offense, I think, is pretty may also. So. I'm going to put them right there in the middle. This is a Nick Cage movie right here. This is like, it's okay. I don't, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. It's, there's good things. There's bad things. You, you know, it's a, it's a mix. So I'm putting them in the middle there. Personally, I would put them at the Benicio del Toro. I think they're, I think they're a little bit higher for me. Good ballpark. Um, Trevor Williams, very hittable pitcher. I love O'Neill Cruz versus bad righties. I know I love O'Neill Cruz on the road in a good ballpark. Versus not just bad righties, but a bad bullpen. Not just a bad bullpen, but a very, very right-handed bullpen. There's just one lefty in that bullpen for Washington. He's thrown two of the last three days. He's probably available today because he didn't pitch yesterday. But uh, Cruz is horrific versus lefties. Also, there's some lefty-righty stuff where, like, you know, uh, Joe Connor might might, might, might uh, – Connor Joe, two first names. Connor Joe might come in for, like, Swinsky or something like that. But, you know, there's a chance that lefty's coming in. But I feel better that there's only one lefty lurking in that pen. Uh, so I like the Pirates a good bit. Cruz, Reynolds, Sawinski, I'm good with Kutch as well. Rowdy Tellez has like a cheap punt first baseman. One of my favorite teams on the slate is the Pirates. But talking about the Nationals, taking on Mitch Keller. Yeah, so the lineup itself, uh, individual parts, not so great. I think taking on Mitch Keller is not a bad scenario tonight. And uh, also – uh, probably a little contrarian. So, just generally speaking, here the Py uh the uh, Washington stack. I'm going Benicio del Toro tier right here. I don't mind. It, okay. Man. I think there's some. I think there's some hope here. I think there's some pro like individual pieces. There's a couple guys in there. I like and maybe. Now nah, maybe just maybe a couple of these guys came down to the choppers knockers later on, but maybe Ooh. I don't know. If, I don't know if they made the actual cut, but there was a couple of these uh Washington bats that I could definitely. Uh, see going that route. We got to get enough likes for the knockers. I'm not sure what the, the official threshold is, but do it that like, do subscribe, do turn on the notifications. 
I'm being told in chat that it's Eddie Murphy's birthday today. What is Eddie Murphy's? What is my favorite Eddie Murphy movie? Uh, besides Pluto Nash, um, I would say it's Coming to America, right? That's got to be the answer, right? That's the so, trading trading places, somebody might say. It's Coming to America. Uh, I don't know. Beverly Hills nah. Cop. And that was a good movie, but I don't think that was one of the best I've ever seen from Eddie. Uh, What's the best then? I don't know. You know, well, I don't know. He's had some good movies like back okay so for a while i know it does it probably doesn't withstand the, the test of time you know it's been a while but like back in the day 48 hours with nick nolte was awesome you okay. know he had his little he had his little run there where the 48 hours and he had beverly hills cop those are some pretty good movies uh but boomerang like, getting a shout out in the chat boomerang was really good too and he's had uh just some weird off off brand movies that were he was the the voice, the donkey in Shrek. That was it was really yeah. good. Shrek Harlem Knights, really remember good. that one? Yeah, Harlem Knights. Oh, you know what? You know what my favorite now that you mentioned that one? Life. Life with Martin Lawrence. With Martin Lawrence? That might be the best Did Eddie. Get the yeah, it was good. <laughs> that was such a good movie, man. Yeah. Eddie, Eddie's got some good stuff going on. All right. Uh back to the game. This is how easy we can get derailed. Uh, somebody was telling me before the show, it's like, man, you're really going to have to filibuster in this show. Like, nope, we're already running out of time. <laughs> we're already running out of time. Uh, plenty of things to talk about as we progress. You got Washington in tier number two, Benicio Del Toro. Uh, you got the Pirates in tier number three, uh, Nick Cage. Up next, let's uh, move on here. Three, just three more games left. There's six more teams. Up next is the Rockies. The Rockies taking on Luke Little, maybe Brown, and who, who knows what else, but they are the Rockies. What tier? I feel like well, I don't want to. I don't want to push you in a, a spot, but I feel like we're getting some uh, some Academy Award snoozers. Uh, for Colorado, I'm going to say, yeah, the lineup kind of stinks, but you don't know what you're going to get here out of the pitching for the Cubs tonight. So it's kind of a mixed bag. I'm going to put them in the Scorsese, Scorsese category. Like, you never know here, man. Like, you know, I, 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 look, at, I look at a movie, oh, Scorsese's directing. Oh, but three hours, my goodness. But you never know. You might get, a, you know, some pretty decent stuff out of it, like Killers of the Flower. It might be okay. Or you might get get stuck with Irishmen. I don't know. But I think I think they're in that tier. You kind of, you know, there's a chance. There's a chance we could pull something out here, but you never know. I can't – this is probably – we don't have time to get into it, but knocking Scorsese is like one of your worst takes I've ever heard. I'm not knocking Scorsese. You have to see the – the wording there, Dean, when Scorsese does a massively long movie, now three hours is just an arbitrary, long, it's an incredible. arbitrary number, Dean, arbitrary number. You you get what I'm saying? Like, okay, how about Casino or Killers of the Flower Moon? Let's make it two, two-hour movies. Let's do a part one and a part two. I'm, I'm all on board with that. I don't need to You just want to suck and, the people dry? You want to get more money out of it? I don't, need to sit down twice? In the, I don't need to sit down in the same chair for four hours and watch this thing. Like, let's break it up a little bit. Attention span. We're in 2000. You must have loved Kill Bill. It was, in, it was originally supposed to be for one movie, and then he's like, oh, let's chop it up and make twice, twice as much money. Nah, um, not, yeah, he's, he's okay. He's got some good flicks, but the, the the time on the timing on him was good fellas like one of the best movies ever i, I can't this okay is, this was it three bad. hours of i don't know it could have been two hours and 27 minutes i don't care and that makes a difference dean that makes a big difference it was two hours and 25 minutes oh perfect <laughs> perfect and for good fellas was fantastic probably probably if you make that three hours and 25 minutes people probably hate it this you know 20 30 years 40 years actually it's probably been about 30 years right for what Goodfellas? Goodfellas. I bet Goodfellas. 1990. Oh, my God. Woo. Yeah. 34 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. It's still, Bobby it's in still chat says, I time. can't believe – Bobby says, I can't believe we're not doing uh, Fast and the Furious movies. I thought for sure we'd have, like, Fast Five. I, th I thought that's what you'd base it around, but I didn't want to tell there's you no, what to do. Uh, there's no uh, – There's no – There's no bad – Offense is good enough to be in that tier tonight. Maybe, <laughs> maybe if we had a 15-game a slate with some garbage pitching – We'd have offenses that could get up to a sixth tier. Okay, Cubbies. Where, where do you have the Cubbies as far as tiers tonight? Yeah. So, hmm. This one, oh, man. It's a tough one, Dean. Uh, yeah, let's go with – let's go – let's put the Cubs in the uh, 
I don't want to uh, – Cantrell's not good. The Cubs, I don't know about the weather, everything that's going on. I'm going to say the Nicolas Cage category. I don't know, man. I'm kind of torn on them. I could see uh, – they have a good offense. Typically, I kind of want to play that offense against marginal pitching. But I think there's some factors tonight that kind of make them a little bit uh, – I don't think Cantrell's that bad. I think the weather's probably a little rough. They don't – so I can't put them any higher than this, and I don't want to put them any lower. So I'm putting them in that middle category of Nick Cage movies. Weather Edge, just a seven-game sample for Colorado, Chicago, 38 degrees, 19-mile-an-hour winds coming in from left left field. It's not, you know, it's not a crosswind. It's a, it's a left field to first base, basically. 35 dew points, 19-mile-an-hour winds. We've seen a decrease in home runs of 27.8%, a decrease in runs of 25.8%. It's just a seven-game sample, but, man. This is terrible, terrible baseball weather. Um, that's just my one issue because I would love to load up on the Cubs, and I'm not saying you can't, but I just feel like homers potentially will be subdued. Let's knock out these next four. We're going to spin the wheel. we got crunch time coming in in about 15 minutes or so. Give me Toronto versus your Astros. Toronto's going in the Scorsese category, and I, I say that because, uh, yeah, the individual bats are good, like, you know. In a, in a vacuum, they seem good, but they have they've scored two runs on a fluke home run uh, in the last two games in Houston. Scored two runs in two games, basically. And uh, Javier may just be real this year. This this new changeup may just be real. May just totally at least uh, throw some teams off until they get a better scouting report on him and and, and get to view it a couple times. So I'm gonna say uh, I'm putting. I'm putting them in the Scorsese that they could get there just on the strength of the line, but I don't like the other factors going on. So Scorsese, not, not great. All right. Uh, Toronto, Steve, they are the third from the left in the top row. I'm not sure if he, Steve I had to sneak away for a second. There we go. I know he knows his uh, – What? In wait the, a second. No, that's no, way he, fake. What in the world's going on here? <laughs> They're definitely not a Denzel. They're a Scorsese. <laughs> they are a Scorsese, my man. And I do like this graphic. This is a pretty incredible little graphic we got going on here. You enjoying it? All right. Yeah, By the way, he, if you guys uh, – He's doing it in real people, time. He's pulling him. That's, that's nice, man. Feel for, if you know it's a long season. We're gonna do these for like the smaller slates, right? Just have some fun with it. It's a again six months. It's a grind. If there's a particular category, if you want to like recommend, I can't promise it, but maybe we'll make it work. We'll figure it out. Uh, just uh, you know, hit me up in the old Twitter machine. Uh, let's talk about your Astros. Where are you putting the Astros? Uh, I'm going to put them in the, uh, Benicio del Toro. I don't mind the Bassett talent. Ooh. I think he's got arm talent, so he's solid. Uh, this team has some batters in there. Okay. What really pushes them up a little bit is, can I just go ahead and divulge the BVP play of the day? BVP play yeah. of the day being your Dan. Like I just can't get to smaller slates. So there's not a lot out there, but when you see a guy who's got, you know, four home runs against the pitcher, and he's that good, and he's he's pretty close to breaking out of this early season funk that he's in. So you got that going for you. It's going to push you up a tier right there. So they're going in the Benicio del Toro tier, even though it's a pretty solid starting pitcher they're going against, and they don't hit at home very well for the last like twenty games. But they've got some things going for them tonight, so I'm putting them in that tier. Did you call it BBP special? I felt like you had like a, a different name for it when you. I mean, you it, went, it was secretly a BBP play. Like the people knew what you were doing. I thought it was called something else. Joe uh, Chop, is that? Am I making that up? Or was it always called like the BBP play? I thought it was like called. Well, it was like a, a sneaky name behind it. Nah, I don't think it was sneaky, but it is. It. I, I don't give a play of the day. It's a BBP suggestion of the day. There you go. And if the people are concerned that they care about such things, fifteen official at bats. Jordan Alvarez versus Chris Bassett, five hits, a single, and four dongs, four homers. Talk, let's knock these both out, the Giants and the Dodgers. I feel like I know where you're going here, but uh, Giants and Dodgers, as far as the stacks, where do they fit for you when it comes to the tiers? Giants are the Snoozer Academy Award. Snoozer, I want no part of it. I'm out on that thing. Just leave me be. If I miss out, I miss out. That's just too bad. And then the Dodgers are going to be the one Denzel movie, I think. Like, yeah, talented pitcher they're going to get. This lineup is just too good, too deep. A lot of good things going on right there. So the Dodgers are the only Denzel movie play of the play stack of the day. 
Our guy in chat, J3, saying it was called, yeah, the Green Goblin BBP. It wasn't Green, it wasn't he like the sponsor of it? I feel like nah. that, somebody had a Green Goblin gimmick. I don't remember who no, it was. It was maybe, maybe it was Blender. No, it was, I had the Triple G play of the day on Layaway. That's what it was. It's not, that's not, it has nothing to do with BVT. BVP is the suggestion of the day. There's the knockers, choppers, knockers. That's my, you know, two hitters kind of close to each other, or maybe they're a little spread out in the batting order the choppers knockers maybe later yeah. uh, the, the the triple g is like my rebuttal to the spidey bomb you see what i'm saying because well yeah it is that's later maybe i don't think we got enough likes for all that though man to be honest with you let's go ahead and uh spin the wheel let's let's pull up uh producer steve we're going to give away a free week of rg premium uh for those that participated appreciate it uh, every Wednesday is Wheel Wednesday. You see how that works with the W's, the old alliteration. If producer Steve can pull up the, the wheel and we can give away a week free of RG Premium. What's up, Steve? I'm not sure if he's joining us via audio, but uh, I see the visual. Let's give it a spin. Shout out to uh, PFL Commish, number 0088. Either producer Steve or producer Devin, they're going to slide into your DMs there in the Discord. They'll hook you up. They'll get you juiced up for a week free. You know, Chop, inevitably, no matter how many times I explain, hey, do this and hey, do that, and I don't like to explain. Hopefully, I wish that people just knew where to go, but I understand why you had to explain it. As we're spinning the wheel, like, hey, where do we register for this? <laughs> like, how does that happen? Are they just joined the show this exact second? I don't know how that works, but, you know, uh, Next time, uh, you know, I see a Rangers fan uh, next Wednesday. Uh, jump into the live stream chat channel in the Discord, rotorredders.com, backslash Discord, the live stream chat channel. Crunch time coming in about 10 minutes or so. You got Kevin Roth, Chief Interologist Kevin Roth, going to tell you what's going on weather-wise. A couple of places that are at least we're keeping our, our eyes on when it comes to Washington, when it comes to the Chicago Cubs, and then basketball. Basketball is happening this evening as well. Keith Eister, as you covered, Dave Potts, Cheese is Good, also coming in. Chop, uh, let's give the people, let's give them the, let's give them the knockers. Who's the, and now, knockers doesn't necessarily mean you're going to bang out a homer, right? It's just like, they just give you like homer type points. Uh, Yeah, just some, well, uh, not, you know, the, the knockers are more like within a stack, you know, somebody who's going to correlate with each, like, just going to correlate with each other. So uh, I, I had it down to two pairs today. Couple pairs of knockers I was eyeballing today. Couple pairs of knockers. All right. So I've got uh, the Dodgers, the Dodgers knockers. Real tight. You ever seen some knockers that are real tight and just like, Dean, this is all baseball related. Don't get your mind out of the gutter, sir. But like real close together, you know, jammed in there, real close together. Sure. Oh, that's that's the good stuff. Had that one. Then I got then I got another pair of knockers that are more spread out, and that's okay. That happens sometimes. Uh, the correlation may be a little bit. A little bit tougher to come by, but yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the more contrarian take here, Dean, and I'm gonna go with the Washington C.J. Abrams, Joey Gallo, going to oh, it's a little a little one four knocker, so you know a little bit of spacing there, but I think there's I think they can make some things happen against Keller tonight. Uh, the Dodgers are so chalky. I, I don't that's a that's a chalk. That's a, I don't want to do I don't want my knockers to be too chalky. Joey Gallo, man, I don't want to say he's like possibly done, but he's possibly done. This is like their last stand when you you sign like a one year deal at Washington to try to figure things out. Like oh, we just need him to make contact, and he's still got that power. I'm sure he crushes BP. Um, but like it's, I think I he I I've, I've watched next to me to watch some of his plate appearances, and obviously he's just striking out so much these days. But uh, he's cheap, and he's got the ability to you know exit the ballpark, and he has one of the better ballparks to hit baseballs in tonight. Uh, dating back to last season, Chopper, 277 at-bats, 42.6% as far as striking out. But but when he hits it, his ISO is 267. That's the biggest ISO on the club. We're not going to count Trey Lipscomb because that's only like a six-game sample or six-at-bat sample. So I like it. I like it for a boom bust, and also he's kind of cheap. And I, I love Abrams. I love both shortstops in that game, both Abrams and uh, on the other side. You know, we got uh, – O'Neill Cruz, two of my favorite plays in the entire slate. Let's see what else is going on in chat. I feel like I. Oh, shout out to Destiny. Destiny says no. I don't know 
is there's not a Rotor Grinders Hall of Fame, though, understanding, but Destiny claims that they need to be in there, smash every night, even though I took down the uh, the 10K on Fandle. So shout out to Destiny. There you go. How much? What? Oh, single entry series. I couldn't figure out what SES was. Single entry series. There you go. The Rotor Grinders single entry series. Congratulations to you. Apparently, uh, Eddie Rosario also has BBP Chop. I'm not sure if you were considering Rosario for your Triple G or, or your uh, your BBP play. That's uh, it, that's the game, though, right? Outside of the Dodgers, I think that's the most interesting game when you consider all the elements. Pittsburgh suggestion, Washington. BVP suggestion. Dean, you're totally Sorry. messing things up here, but uh, yeah, I, I saw it. I, I saw it for a second, but nah, you can't. You know, Jordan's the guy here tonight. <laughs> we're, we're still in rain delay in Baltimore, by the way. What are they yeah, doing? That they're yeah. playing cards. What, what are the players doing right now? I mean, what are you doing? That's kind of like hours? that's like got to be kind of annoying, right? If you're a player and you just kind of want either either let's play the game or let's just go home. I'd rather yeah. play a double header sometime down the road than sit here all night long and do these shenanigans. Unless I'm missing something, yeah, I see they're still in delay. Nothing's been called. Uh, I'm not sure if anything's been announced or not, but that does seem, yeah, uh, that seems pretty wild. Then Philadelphia. They pushed their time back to 4.05, and now they're sitting there with us two hours later, essentially. Still haven't figured it out, and I think it's getaway day for those teams as well. So um, just messing up all sorts of schedules. The traveling secretary is probably not happy. I'll tell you, that's who's not happy, that happy. Not having a good day for sure. Um, okay, so Steve is saying the tarp is off. The oh, they are about to play. Oh, good. oh there you go. They're actually going to play a game, though. I assume that's for the Baltimore game. I don't know, but uh, all right, there you go. Chop, do you have any homers, just individual homer calls? Individual homer calls. Uh, hmm. Let's go with uh, – I, I had some guy. Okay. Uh, which one do I want to give you? I'm going to give you – let me give you two of them, Dean, all right? Just okay. cover my bases because I think I'm going ray, way off the radar here a little bit. So I'm going to go Yiner Diaz, who – like uh, Small sample in his career. He's only had one real year, and that's partial with splitting time. But, boy, he's a reverse splits hitter, man, uh, according to last year. Like, he was really good against righties and just was terrible against lefties. So we'll get him in there against Bassett. And let's go. I, I, I like this Pittsburgh-Washington game for sneaky offense. So let's go on the Pittsburgh side, Jack, Jack Sawinski. Let's go with Jack Sawinski and see if he can't do anything in that matchup. I like the Sawinski call as well. Uh, as far as umpire data, there's a like one extreme I'm seeing extreme hitters umpire for Houston and Toronto, uh, for what it's worth. Hey, hey, Chop, you know, we always talk about stacks. We had a conversation about stack previously, but you're one of the guys, and I, I think you advocate more so than most. You don't necessarily have to have a stack. Now, you're not going to run 1 1, 1 1, 1 1, 1 1, but in a four game slate, and I don't know, you're making one lineup, but like 3 3 2. Three, three, one, one. Those kind of things are acceptable, right? Four games. I would definitely advocate for not setting a, a specific rule of like, got to have a five man stack in here. You know, I, I definitely think that there's some leeway given to each slate. When we get a one of these Tuesday slates where we've got 14 games, there will be a stack that probably takes the thing down. And can you can you find it? And and so then, yeah, I think you got to stack. Max four man, four by four or five man. Uh, but we're talking about a four game slate. The odds that one of these eight teams like really goes off to do it, I think drastically decreases. So I think you can definitely take down uh, GPPs with, you know, different varieties of things. Like, like you said, two, three, uh, two, two, one, one, one. I don't know, whatever it is, but it's definitely Three, two, 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 one. Yeah, you can we, go we can all, all off the radar. Crazy. It's just so, it's just so, uh, smaller field, especially a, baseball's so random, man. Like, it's tough to like get pigeonholed into the same rules on every slate. You just can't do that. So, yeah, four gamer, especially with you know, some good pitching up top, limits those stacks down even more. Yeah, I, I definitely think you could do away with your rules. Uh, there's some uh, uh, when you look in the lineup HQ, you can do a, a thing where you can give a little bit of a bump to certain players, you know, so you don't necessarily give a bump to the whole team, but give a bump to certain players. So you're getting more of those guys combined. And if there's two guys in the lineup that do it for you, give them both a little bump and you'll get a lot of two man stacks like that. But, yeah, I'm not going I'm not going full five man stack on on a small slate like this. 
Crunch time, Kip should be coming in here shortly. Yeah, I do see the start times here if you play the other slate. Uh, Royals, Orioles expected to start 6.05 Eastern. And Reds, Phillies expected to start at 7.30, between 7.30 and 7.45. So getting getting both those games in. Chop, your favorite Dodger tonight is who? Well, Dean, now that you now that you bring up the Dodgers, my I had a couple of knockers in this lineup, but I didn't I didn't okay. want to go I didn't want to go too chalky for you. But I say probably overall my favorite guy that was gonna be one of my knockers was Will Smith. Like, you know, assuming he's in the lineup. I don't I don't we don't have a Dodgers lineup and we don't have it just yet. He's probably he gonna be in it. Yeah, I would imagine he is, but you know, just in case. Uh, but it's Will Smith, you know, he's got the he's really he's First of all, he's cheaper than those guys at the top of the order above him. He's far cheaper than them, so you get that benefit. You get the, the left-handed matchup. He's really good against lefties. He can take uh, the catching position for you, which is uh, typically a weak position. I, he fits the bill on a lot of different categories here. So Will Smith's my favorite Dodger. By the way, myself, the Looch, and Kyle Murray, we did our uh, rankings as far as stacks in the slate consensus-wise. It's the Dodgers, no surprise. Houston second, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Washington, and Toronto. That is the consensus, yeah. um, which Dean, is, I guess, about right. Quick yeah, what's question up? for you. I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know what we call Will Smith. Is Will Smith the uh, Fresh Prince of L.A.? Is that his nickname for the show? Like in real life, is that his nickname? No, nah, well, for the show. You know, like, yeah, there's we got Patty the Tooth, you know. We got, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We okay, got, yeah, I've never heard – that sounds like it could be like a real nickname, but I don't know, but it makes sense. Um, but yeah, it, it, I, I'll go with it. Sure, why not? Okay. Fresh Prince of LA. You know what it is? Like he's been around so long and he's been like a pretty good player for so long that I don't even think of, a, of the actor anymore when I say, you know what I mean? It's just like, it's like not even like a thing. Um, it's like, oh, Will Smith. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, there, is, there is a famous actor. Oh, he did slap somebody on the Oscars. That's Will right. Smith's got some good movies too now. Will Smith's not, he's, he's he's a solid, solid movie guy. <laughs> solid movie guy, Will Smith. Independence yes, Day, most, what, a, what a great flick that was, Independence Day. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's a little It's a little cheesy. Is that the best Will Smith movie, Independence Day? No way, man. There's got to be more. Gotta be, gotta be it's got to be something than, better than that, better than, right? You know what Will Smith uh, franchise that I, I've never really got into that people like is Bad Boys? There's a fourth one coming out. And, they, they, and Martin Lawrence has got to be very excited, but yeah, another one. I, I saw a trailer just drop the other day, but uh, yeah, if you if you're not into the first three, you're probably not into the fourth one. But there is a fourth one coming up. You know who might be able to help us out with uh, the best possible Will Smith movie? It's Crunch Time, and they're here. So uh, let's bring on Crunch Time. Kevin Roth. Hey, Potts, Keith Eister, best. I, yeah, can we just start the show by saying it's a great movie and there's no right answer, but it's it's wild to me that Independence Day is what was pulled out as <laughs> talk, talk about a Will Smith movie. <laughs> like, Have you met Tom before? And that's great, but like, I, it's 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 wild to me. And in, in a wonderful you know what? Way, I will agree with that because I'm totally forgetting classics like focus i love focus uh with margot robbie and will smith those are some good oh yeah he's many black movies. is the first one that pops to my oh, mind that's another uh, good there, one. there's a lot uh no he's got like guy oh hitch was so good i watch hitch on repeat because <laughs> you know <laughs> eva mendez oh my gosh you know. is that yeah, movie Mendes. still always on some TV channel sometime for like 10 years. Yeah. You couldn't not see that movie if you were it's up like there a TBS like staple. Morning. Yeah. Or TNT staple. Roth, what's your official answer? Uh it's it's uh, I am legend and it's not very close for me. I love that so movie. Oh good. So yeah. good. Oh, I like it, Roth. I like it. Yeah. All right. We got the chat fired up. Uh before we step aside and get out of here and make way, anything else before you uh, leave the good people here, Chop? You want to leave them with a, on a high note? Uh, no, not really, Dean. You you already like squeezed me for every single bit <laughs> I have today. Like I don't have any more bits left, to be honest with you, man. All right, on a whimper, uh, Rotor Grinders, we're exiting. Crunch time coming in. You got Keith Eister for basketball. Uh, Keith desperately wants to talk about his Cubs. I know he does, but <laughs> Keith, how much you want to talk about the Cubs right now? You can't. I guess you can. Let, let, let Keith talk about the Cubs. If any any Cubs questions come up, 
I'm assuming you want to talk about the Cubs, or am I wrong to assume that? Yeah, I always want to talk about the Cubs. That sounds a lot more interesting than uh, Mohamedou Gaye and uh, some of the other <laughs> names that we're going to throw out for the NBA, for sure. Enjoy it. Thankless job. You got Keith talking basketball. You got uh, Raw talking some uh, some weather. There is still some stuff lurking out there. I would love some clarity. And Dave, of course, all of the baseball. Myself and Chop, do appreciate you watching the first portion. And now we're going to yield to crunch time. Roth, take it away. Good stuff. Welcome to it, ladies and gents. You know the drill. Crunch time, uh, split sport. We're going to talk some baseball with Cheese. going to talk some hoops uh, with Keith Deister, a.k.a. the Iceman. Cheese, got to give you your kudos. Got to give you your dap here. On an earlier show, just a few hours ago, I asked you for home run calls. You gave me three, one shocky one, one middle of the board, one off the board. And all three of them hit bombs. Well done, sir. Incredible. Yeah. Absolutely they all, incredible. They all, watch, they all watch crunch time is what it is. <laughs> yeah. They were like, uh, better deliver for cheese is, is how it went. Yes. Uh, that's pretty great. I wanted to tally up what the odds were and see like what a parlay would have done. Um, because somebody tweeted me and said, man, uh, I usually bet these parlays, but he was at work and he couldn't do it. And he's like, I would have won a ton of yeah. money on cheese. This is why you should not be working at like 11 o'clock on a Wednesday. Like who yes. is at Oh, wait a second. It was yeah. like <laughs> 1130 on Wednesday morning. I guess that's okay. Mm, yeah. Um, anyways, great job. That's amazing. No pressure, but obviously I'm going to see if you can, you know, run it back later on in the show. Uh, so be considering that stick around for that. Of course. Uh, how you doing? Jeez. How did your, uh, your early slate go? Or is it, it's still it ongoing? Fine. Yeah. Right? But like I said, I barely played at all because of yeah. all that weather. I, I knew that I didn't know. So, I mean, I had like just a couple lineups. Um, yeah. And I, okay. I, I didn't, I didn't even look at them. Uh, okay. Well, we still have more weather concerns more on that in a bit, but first, uh, what is with it? First, first <laughs> we will bring in, uh, Keith Eister, AKA the ice man. What up ice? Not too much. Uh, crazy weather day. You have to be exhausted after this weather day. It's been a wild one for sure. Yeah. Um, but did you see Wemby yesterday? Because you said that he was going to smash. He absolutely smashed. That that quadruple double. Or Yeah, it, it's, it's coming. coming. It's, it's coming. coming. He was I, so close last night. Yeah, I, it was one of those, like, my wife doesn't give a shit about sports, but sometimes I just have to be like, I know you don't care, but I'm going to tell you this. And I was like, Wemby's getting a quadruple double. Quadruple double. Like, it's coming. It, I just cannot wait. I'm so excited for it. Uh, he's he's freaking amazing. And you just, play, you just play him. You just play him every single slate. You just play that freaking dude. I assume he's not on the slate tonight. He is not. Because mm. if he was, you just, you just play him, and then you make money, and it's that easy. Uh, how you doing? I see you, uh, you dabbling in any baseball. Are you still like locked in, focused in on some hoops? Oh yeah, definitely dabbling in the in the baseball. Um, but hoops is still around too, so little du double duty action here for a couple of weeks. Okay, very nice. Well, you know that time is fleeting, so we will uh, enjoy these crossovers while we can. Cheese, I think we got to start talking some weather again, just like we started the last show, and uh, similarly. I don't really know what they're going to do here in Chicago. We'll start with with uh, Washington, where the game is going to start dry. It should start on time, and they should have a solid two hours, if not a little more, before any rain moves in. I do think rain is going to move in around 9 Eastern, um, maybe a little bit later than that, or maybe it moves in at 9 Eastern and the delay comes shortly thereafter. Um, so I'm not going to give pitchers the all clear, nothing can go wrong, because maybe, maybe the rain comes a little early and you end up with a delay halfway through the game. But I do think any delay would come in the latter half of the game. You know, fifth inning or later, more so seventh inning or later is, is like the more likely outcome there. Um, and I do expect that they would be able to finish. Uh, it might take another 90 minutes, two hours. So there is that world where they're just like, well, it's, it's 10 to 1. It's in the seventh or eighth inning. Let's just call it. That, that's certainly possible as well. Um, but that's that's my take on Washington. What 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 are your thoughts on my thoughts? Yeah, that's fine. It's mostly a, a hitting game, and with the pitchers, like you, the pitchers are in the pool just because of the small slate. But if you get an hour and a half, you're set. So I, yeah, it's not like we're getting complete games here. So that's okay, fine. okay, great. Well, then I like our chances of getting an hour and a half. Like, in fact, I feel very, 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 very good about those chances. So that's not an issue. Uh, and again, I do think they'll probably come out and, and finish the game, even if they do get an in-game delay. Uh, someone in the chat says, Will Smith is not a good actor. And if you could just ban Eric Johnson for that take, 
Uh, just don't let him back in. Uh, that would be that'd be fine by me because that's, that's 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 not right. He he is a very good actor. Um, oh, and then there's Chicago, right? And it's cold. It's rain snowing combined, and it's windy. And those are just terrible conditions to play baseball in. It is clear to me they want to play. Otherwise, they would have postponed it shortly after the White Sox. But the rain's also sticking around a little longer than forecast models were showing and that I had hoped. So as of now, it is still raining in Chicago. It'll clear 100%. It will clear. But we've gotten to the point where they might actually need to late start it and then start playing in crappy weather, which is a little bit worrisome. Um, I still think we'll probably hear something from them during the show, whether that's this game is canceled or we're going to late start it. Um, for now, my official lean is they're playing because otherwise they would have postponed four hours ago. Um, but I, to be clear, I do not have a high confidence in, in that take. Uh, any thoughts there, Cheese? Um, I'm not playing any like one-off batters. Or that's not true. I have one like Nolan Jones ran him one off on FanDuel. Uh, but essentially I'm going to do some cup stacks and we'll talk about the pitchers. Like I'm, I'm playing some nonsense garbage pitchers, but like if they, if they get postponed before lock, before that game locks, mm-hmm. I'll just swap it to whatever random reliever for the Dodgers. I mean, it's okay. It's fine, but I'm not going to start picking out Cubs bats individually either for the chance of postponement or just for the bad hitting weather. Yeah. Uh, and that's the second thing I was going to mention. It is incredibly bad hitting weather. Like it's, it's in the thirties. It, the winds are blowing in. It is terrible, terrible hitting weather. So I love the idea of taking a flyer on a pitcher there, even if the pitcher sucks, uh, assuming that he's cheap and just kind of seeing what happens. You mentioned if that game gets postponed, then, you know, you got to make that pivot. Hopefully that would happen before lock. Um, so that's it. Any other weather things I need to cover cheese or you feel like that's, uh, no, I think that's it. Yep. That is it. Okay. Well, I'll keep a watch on things because I I think there's a decent chance we might get some Chicago news coming up and I'll let you know if I see anything different in the models, but that's where I stand there. Uh, ice, we're going to bring you in, in a little bit to talk some hoops, but in the meantime, you cool with talking some baseball here with cheese. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Cheese. Why don't you run me through your pictures? You talked about some guys, you might play, but I don't think you said like the the dude yet. Yeah, the the dude is Tyler Glass now. Um, to me, so I have like ninety five percent Glass now on both sites. Mm. I have like one just in case giant stack against him, and then I have a couple lineups where I just wanted to, you know, re- release the hounds or whatever we say. Um, but essentially, I'm very close to lock button on Glass now on both sites because uh, there just aren't other good pitchers. Um, after him, you basically got this group of Christian Javier, Chris Bassett, Mitch Keller. Um, if I knew that everyone was in midseason form, I would prefer Mitch Keller, but I'm still, I'm a little nervous about his velocity being down and he was off in spring. So I'm calling Javier, my SP two, if salary is no option, no option, no issue. No. Yeah. Uh, so a glass now Javier, uh, but I don't love, Javier or Bassett in that Blue Jays Astros game for the salary. Like, I think it's kind of, I don't know, we're overpaying for risky matchups and just kind of okay pitchers. Um, but certainly, Hughes, uh, Toronto has proven to be beatable. Um, and Javier, he at least he looked pretty good in his first start. So I'm going to call him my SP2 um, with a few shares of Mitch Keller um, as the pivot off of him. And who were the pitchers in that Chicago game that you were mentioning? So, so that's what we'll talk about. And this, this is DraftKings only. Um, it is Cal Quantrill for the Rockies, who is a terrible, terrible DFS pitcher. He's no strikeout ability, but he throws strikes. And in this weather, that's all you have to do to have a chance. And he's 5,300. So I do like him. I think Trevor Williams who's in the Washington game is a better pitcher than Quantrill slightly, but I'm going to side with Quantrill. If we think that game's going to play, the problem here is the Washington game is the first one to lock. So you can't switch them out later. If we learn something more than a half hour from now, 
Um, but I, I, I do prefer Quantrill over Williams. Uh, but I'm playing 4K Cubs pitcher, and I'm playing Ben Brown, who is the presumed long reliever, rather than Luke Little, who's probably just a one-inning guy. Um, it's conceivable that they let Luke Little throw a couple innings, but I think he's like one inning. Or is this Ben Brown could throw three or four innings even. Um, these guys are not good, but they are facing the Rockies, and they're 4K. So um, Ben Brown, honestly, is my second highest on pitcher. Um, Love it. And it like because I just don't feel good about Javier Keller and Bassett, like I think they're just overpriced, I would gladly take five points for 4K rather than try to get 15 for 9K. Okay. I love that take. Uh, my concern and likely yours as well is what happens if you can't play Ben Brown because he's out. You mentioned going to like a reliever in a later game. Do you have a guy specifically? Cause um, that's realistic. That's a possible scenario. Yeah. So um, I haven't, I, I have not looked at to make sure that everyone is actually 4k. Mm -hmm. Um but assuming they are, I would I would play uh, Evan Phillips for the Dodgers. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm completely happy putting in a 4K reliever, even like taking a zero at that spot. I don't think is going to kill my lineups. Okay. Very good. Interesting stuff. Um, is it fair, Cheese, that if someone just doesn't want the risk, they can avoid that Chicago game, both bats and pitchers, pretty easily without losing like a, a whole lot. Yeah, and in that case, you would be – if you need the cheap pitcher, you would play Trevor Williams, um, who has downside, but he he probably also gets you like 10 points, probably. Mm -hmm. um, or more likely, I think you, you go ahead and try to spend up to Javier or Keller. Okay, nice. Um, all right, well, let's go talk some stacks, and then we'll go around the horn. What is lock at, cheese? Is it uh... – it's actually it's a uh, forty-five, 45 after. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, let's go. Uh, let's talk about your favorite stacks. Yeah. So it's the Dodgers. Um, although the Dodgers are facing one of the better pitchers on the slate, it's conceivable they're facing the second best pitcher on the slate. Um, and and to which I should say, it's not totally crazy to play Kyle Harrison in MME, um, the Giants pitcher. But it's the Dodgers, and they're just so good. Um, and Harrison does look like a guy who's going to give up right-handed power. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the Dodgers have some of that. And he's also not – it's an incredibly small sample size, but he has not shown the ability to get lefties out. So I just – I love the Dodgers stack. And that's part of the reason I'm playing Ben Brown, is that allows you to play like Bet Smith with one of Freeman or Otani. Okay. Yeah, um, after good. the Dodgers, um, Pirates are my next favorite stack. And then the Nationals are kind of in the mix a little bit. The Blue Jays and Astros game, I prefer just kind of power hunting. Um, but I, I certainly have a few stacks, but that's more I'm kind of picking out home runs from that game. Okay, then let's go around the horn. All right. So catcher is very much Will Smith, um, the baseball player. Um, because he is legend, as they say. Um, nice. It's a great matchup for him. Um, not super expensive at 49, but if you can't spend 49, um, I would go Henry Davis next for 3,600. Um, Yiner Diaz, Kiebert Ruiz, it's all like fine, but essentially Smith or Davis or just the guy in the stack. Okay. How about first base? So first base is where it's tricky because you don't really love spending all the way up for Freeman or Otani on DK against a, a lefty, who even though he hasn't been good yet, he's probably going to be good against lefties. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of spend down at first base. Um, Rowdy Telez and John Singleton look like very obvious cheap play for power. Um, I think Telez will get a lot more ownership because we didn't know until, I don't know, 30 minutes ago that Singleton was in the lineup. So there's not a lot of content out on him, whereas people have been talking about Telez all day. Um, I also like uh, Vlad 
just more as a one-off. Uh, I think that's pretty much pretty much it. Second base. Second base is bad. So this is where, if I'm playing Mookie, I'm playing him mostly at second. Although I'm okay uh, with Kevin Biggio as a punt. Um, Javier is pretty splitsy and will give up some lefty power. So Biggio is my favorite cheap play. Altuve is always fine. Um, but in the realm of spend ups, he's just, he's not like my go-to guy. I really want to get up to bets if I'm spending money or try to save it. Is Altuve still like a five, four bat? Is he still that You're talking guy? about how tall he is? <laughs> he didn't grow. If that's what you mean. <laughs> Nicely done. No, that's not not what I was referencing. Uh, like, is he still a spend up bat? Does is he, he still, still have... good? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's still okay. Yeah, he's still okay. good. Um, and yeah. uh, he's getting all around him. Just, you know, I don't know if he can. He yeah. still still steal base. All right, okay. Yeah, um, the steals are dro are dropping off. Um, yeah, but yeah, he's still very good. Okay, uh, how about third base? Um. Also, not a strong day for third base. Um, I think you're kind of overspending for anyone other than a bad play like Trey Lipscomb, who I'm playing a lot of because I don't, I don't want to spend my money on this position because I just don't think it's great. Um, now, Cabrian Hayes is not really expensive, so I think it's fine. Um, and like on FanDuel, you don't really need to punt because – Bregman's only 3K. Um, or you could do like Chris Taylor is fine um, as a cheap play. But on DraftKings, it's a lot tougher because you don't have all the the cheap Dodgers at third base. And like Bregman's priced up. X Muncy's priced up. Justin Turner's priced up. Um, so I'm mostly playing Hayes or just punting with Lipscomb and hoping he gets some points by accident. Okay. Shortstop. So you do have Mookie Betts here, uh, but like I said, I prefer Betts at shortstop because we have O'Neill Cruz, C.J. Abrams, and Bo Bichette, um, all pretty solid plays. We also have um, Chris Taylor's here on DraftKings as well as FanDuel. Um, Kiki Hernandez on FanDuel is only 23, and Miguel Rojas is only 22. At least one of those three guys will get pinch hit for, but they're so cheap, I just don't care. Like. If you're stacking the Dodgers, you need one of those cheap guys, and I like using them uh, at shortstop. Um, but if, if you got money other than bets, I like Cruz and Abrams. Okay, then we get to go to the outfield. Always a fun time. Um, it's it's just great. I'm gonna go Alvarez and Tucker ahead of Otani and Springer, kind of the next couple plays. But all those guys are fantastic. Um, Brian Reynolds is a, a little expensive on DK, but I think that keeps him under the radar. Jack Suwinski is going to be a very popular salary relief play. Um, I do like him. Uh, Dalton Varsho in that same price range. I think guys like Eddie Rosario will get a little play too. Like you do need a couple salary savers somewhere, even if you're playing the 4K pitcher. Um, and I, I think that Pittsburgh-Washington game is mostly the place to look. So that's kind of your, I would call it good chalk because it's not like mega chalk. Yeah. With guys like Sawinski. Okay. It's time, Cheese. You know what time it is. Time to disappoint the people three <laughs> times in a row. <laughs> three for three on an earlier show. It's really, yeah. there's nothing you can do but let them down at this point. Um, give me some home run picks. What do you like? Yeah, I mean, we'll do the same thing. The, the, the obvious play, I will just take Mookie Betts. Um, the guy is very good. Uh, this, you know, not off the radar because people are playing him in DFS will be Jack Sawinski. And for the off the radar is Kevin Biggio. Lock it in. Lock it in, folks. All right. Uh, are taking notes. Good stuff, as always, Cheese. If you guys have any baseball questions... You can uh, drop them in the Discord. He's going to be hanging out there, probably. Cheese, you going to be in the Discord? Yeah, I'll answer questions in there while you guys talk hoops, and then that sounds good. Holler at me when you need me. Okay, we will bring you back shortly. Here, uh, first though, we are going to bring in uh, Keith Eister, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit of b-ball. Uh, what's been happening, man? What's what has happened, and what is still to drop?
all kinds of things have happened. Um, there's more value than we know what to do with, particularly at the center position and potentially even maybe some more to come with uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron James listed questionable on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. So I, like they're always on the injury report. They generally mm -hmm. play, but just because it's a back-to-back, -back, there's a little bit more risk. Um, so that's the big thing that we're still waiting on. Uh, things that we've gotten so far that are impacting the slate. Um, Dame is out again, and now Chris Middleton is out as well, along with Patrick Beverly. So Giannis is going to be popping like crazy as the top spend again. Um, SGA and Jalen Williams are out again for Oklahoma City. Tough matchup for them against Boston, so not, not as good as a spot for Oklahoma City today as yesterday. And Charlotte, basically their entire team is out, um, in addition to all the guys they've had out for weeks. Uh, we now have Miles Bridges and Michic out as well. So Trey Mann looking like a really good value there. Um, let's see, Bagley and Holmes are both out for Washington. Um, so uh, let's see, uh, Vukovic, um, not not Vucevic, Vucevic, but Vukovic. Um, I'm sorry, that's not the same person? There's a no, different dude? A different oh, dude, gosh. very similar last name. Um, I'm so disappointed that Bagley is out. I was going to work in a, a Bagley Vance from the Will Smith movie, Bagger Vance. But, oh, uh, nice. I guess it's, it's not meant to be, so not carry on. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he, he played th 31 minutes yesterday um, after Holmes got hurt. Um, so he is popping as a, a really strong value projected to start at center for Washington. Um, Kelly Olynyk is out for Toronto in addition to RJ Barrett and Bruce Brown. Um, so you, we have a guy named Mohamedou Guille who is popping uh, for Toronto. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, Mike Conley is out for Minnesota. That doesn't matter all that much, but Cat's still out. So potential value there, but probably don't need it with everything else that we have. Also, the most recent one to drop here, Miles Turner, uh, was ruled out. So there's even more center value incoming. Um, Jalen Smith. And Isaiah Jackson, keep an eye on the starting lineup. I think they're both going to be playable in tournaments. Um, the cash guy will probably be whichever one is starting, and maybe not even the cash guy with uh, the cheap centers that we already have, but waiting on a projections update for the, for the Indiana stuff. Other guys that are still questionable, um, Detroit is the main one outside of the Lakers. Uh, Cade Cunningham and uh, Marcus Sasser still questionable. Not sure that's going to move the needle for cash games, but maybe some tournament stuff in there uh grayson allen is also questionable D would not change anything for me and actually phoenix mm -hmm. isn't even on the slate so no okay okay well it does seem like there's a lot going on so let's uh, start with FanDuel. walk me through a build there and then we'll jump it over to dk and then we're going to open up to any and all questions baseball basketball food related or other all right so over here on FanDuel, i mentioned Giannis again just an incredible situation again with no dame also, Middleton out again. Not as good of a matchup as yesterday, um, but he does get Memphis, who we know is really shorthanded. So Giannis is the top spend, is a core tag here for Noto. Uh, Vukovic, as I mentioned, really cheap center. Played really well last night. Um, projected to draw the start here for Washington. And then Trey Mann with Micic out and Miles Bridges. Miles Bridges vacating a lot of uh, usage as well. Uh, Mann is grading out as a really strong project projection. So uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and jump into the point guard position. Uh, Man has that core tag. He is definitely one of the first guys you're putting in a cash lineup. Um, Banton is, the price has come up a little bit, but they just keep running the guy out there for 30 plus minutes. So he, he looks like a really strong play on the other side of that game. Uh, Jordan Poole has massive upside uh, for Washington. If you want to go like more of a tournament play, probably don't want that in cash. Uh, if you're looking to save money in addition to man, I would go to somebody like Luke Kennard. Could also play him at shooting guard. Um, other tournament plays I like. Uh, Cade Cunningham, if he plays, I think is is really strong. Um, Scoot Henderson is seeing a ton of minutes here. Uh, hasn't been great recently, but I, I don't hate that. And uh, DeJounte Murray has a massive price tag, but the matchup against Detroit is, is incredible. Uh, so don't hate going that route either. Um, at shooting guard... Uh, you can spend up for Anthony Edwards. Certainly think that's that's a great idea. Awesome matchup against Toronto. They've been abysmal on the defensive end here with their depleted roster uh, and even more shorthanded here tonight. Um, 
mentioned Banton and Kennard at point guard. You could play either of them here at shooting guard. Uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker should be in for a big role here today. Uh, love this matchup for them against Toronto. D'Angelo Russell is a guy you certainly want some exposure to, um, especially if LeBron or AD gets ruled out. Um, Pat Connaughton should have a significant role. Um, we are cur currently projected to him to start, so keep an eye on that. Um, if he goes back to the bench, he probably lose a couple of minutes on that that projection. Um, but right now, uh, as projected as a starter, he looks pretty good. At the small forward position, um, you can play Ant Edwards here if you if you're not playing him at shooting guard. Brandon Miller should be just should have monster usage for the Charlotte team. Uh, when you take Miles Bridges off the floor, uh, he's already had significant usage in the second half of the season here. So huge bump for Brandon Miller. Uh, Davis Bertans is another Charlotte guy who's cheap. Minutes are kind of tough to pin down. Uh, we haven't projected for 29. Uh, I think there's like he's not going to play 34 minutes or anything, but if he if he gets upper 20s minutes, he's pretty good uh, per minute. Uh, so, so certainly don't hate him at 4,200. Avdia, if you're looking to spend up here, is a guy who's been playing a ton of minutes. Uh, if AD were to get ruled out, I would like that even more. Uh, would greatly increase the rebounding matchup for him. Alexander Walker has some all forward eligibility as well. Jay Crowder, a guy we can certainly consider with Middleton out now in addition to Dame. Um, let's see. I think that about covers it. At the power forward position, Giannis is the first guy in your cash game, top spend on the slate. Uh, Guye actually has power forward eligibility here on FanDuel. He's only 3,500. Um, makes a ton of sense as, as a punt. Uh, probably need him in the starting lineup to um, – to lock that into cash games. I think he's still playable off the bench in tournaments, um, but I do want him starting uh, for him to be in my cash lineup. Uh, Jalen Williams for the Thunder is certainly playable as well. Not Jalen Williams, who is out. So the, the wing is out, the, the good player. <laughs> Jesus, like, what are you talking about? Cut it out. I, I've heard of Jalen Williams, but I, I have not heard of Jalen Williams. Is this what you're telling so, me? Yeah. So same oh, team, man. two Jalen Williams. <laughs> it's it's incredible stuff. Uh, the big man is in play today. The wing is out. Um, he saw 28 minutes in the, in the last game, uh, so certainly should have a role again here today. Uh, Pogushevsky for Charlotte is kind of a sim very similar play to the to Bertans. I think one of them ends up with significant run into the upper 20s today. Um, I love Poku as a pivot in tournaments away from Bertans if you want to do that. Uh, Grant Williams is a another Charlotte guy who could see way more usage than, than normal, uh, so certainly like him in tournaments. Uh, Anthony Davis is, is always a tournament play if he's in there. Um, and then at the center position here, all kinds of cheap options. Assuming that Vukovic is starting, he's the cheapest and my favorite. Um, you could play Jalen Williams from the Thunder or Poku at center as well. Uh, Brandon Clark's price has come up a little bit, but I, I don't hate a, a tournament shot there. Uh, you never know when when Memphis is going to change up their rotation. He's been living in that like low 20s range, um, but for him to pop up and play like 26 minutes wouldn't surprise anybody, I don't think. Uh, the the indie guys are going to look really good here too. Probably Jalen Smith looks like who we're projecting to start. I'll give it a refresh on projections here before we move it over to DraftKings. Um, Bruno Fernando, uh, Chop has tagged as a, a tournament play. Uh, I like that quite a bit. Like this matchup against Detroit, he's not going to play a ton of minutes, but could absolutely smash in in limited minutes. So love love Chop's call there. Um, I think that about covers it. Okay. Uh, let's kick it over to FanDuel, we'll talk about what's different there, and uh, getting a lot of requests for weather here. So let me do that real quick. Um, I was just about to tweet it, but I might as well give it here since we're all hanging out. Um, I, I am increasingly of the opinion that I think they're going to play in Chicago, and I say that because they're about to mostly dry out. And from this point on, we'll say 10 minutes from now, uh, from that point on, it's just spotty light off and on showers, more off and on, right? So they're mostly dry uh, after about 10 minutes. And the fact that they didn't postpone it up until now, um, those two factors combined, mostly dry, and they didn't postpone it four hours ago when they could have, makes me think that they're willing to play in the cold and wind and light rain. And they were just kind of waiting for this batch to clear. Um, I think they're going to play. I don't feel like 
that is some sort of lock by any means. The weather's horrible. It's in the thirties and it's windy and it's terrible. Um, but my gut for those two reasons I mentioned is that they're going to play. Um, Ryan says, I'm still fading PTSD from New York last. That's totally fine. Like I absolutely get that. If you want to play it safe, just fade that game. There's nothing there you need anyways, according to cheese. Um, but my, my lean is that they're going to play. And then in Washington, wouldn't be shocked to see a, a delay in the latter innings, fifth inning or later, more likely seventh inning or later if we get a delay in Washington. We start dry. Most of the game, if not all of the game, plays before some rain moves in. Even if they do get a delay, you give it 90 minutes to maybe two hours, they'd be able to get back out there and finish up. Um, so I think they will end up playing a complete game. And I think the most likely outcome is a late inning delay. So that is... Uh, is a quick weather update. Cheese, does that change anything for you? That's kind of no, weird. that's because I was on. leaving stuff in there anyway, and I really don't have a lot of bats there anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but so yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna take any out of that game. Yeah. Okay. Um yeah, so those are my takes. They're not at all stone cold locks, but that's what I feel is happening tonight. Um with that, uh ice, let's go kick it over to DK. By the way, hit the thumbs up. Usually I say hit the thumbs up for these two. Hit the damn thumbs up for me. It's been a hell of a day. It's been a hell of a 24 hours. Uh, <laughs> smash that today, like button for us. Sure. Uh, just trying to, trying to crank out some good, helpful content for you guys. And all we ask is that you hit a little like and subscribe. Um, and hey, let me let me jump in for two seconds. There's people, some yeah. jokingly, some not asking about Cardi in the chat. Like, he's just off this week because he has stuff to do. Like, he'll be back, I think even on Friday. But, like, Cardi hasn't gone anywhere. He's just the first few days of the season and he's still working on getting the back going. So don't be alarmed. He'll be back this weekend. Yeah. And that's a usual thing. Usually early in the season, he's just fine tuning everything that goes along with the bat, which he runs by himself essentially. Um, so he, he will be back. This is not out of the ordinary. Um, okay. With that, sorry to like break up your mojo there, Keith, but let me know what, what you're doing over on DK. Yeah, no, that was actually really helpful because it allowed me to get a reset on the Indiana projections, make sure I had my bearings all, all straight there. And we did get the Lakers news. Uh, both AD and LeBron are in. Um, also, Marcus Sasser is available. Did not see anything on Cade Cunningham yet. Uh, so I believe Cade is the last piece of news that we're waiting on. Um, but very similar over here on DraftKings, just value all over the place. Same three core tags. Giannis as the top spend up on the slate. Trey Mann is an incredible value without Micic and Bridges uh, and Vukovic. Also did get Vukovic confirmed starting as well. So definitely a cash game must uh, for Vukovic. Uh, just minim he's minimum price over here on DraftKings at, at 3K. So same same three core tags. We'll go jump into, into the position by position. Um, one second here. All right. At, at point guard, you're starting with Trey Mann for sure. Um, I do think DeJounte Murray is a viable spend up. He's a little bit cheaper than he was over on FanDuel. Um, Banton is in play. Uh, I, I still paid for tournaments if he uh, gets ruled in here in the next few minutes. Scoot Henderson, Jordan Poole, uh, D'Angelo Russell, I think is going to be sneaky tonight now that um, LeBron and AD are both in. I just like, the, like chasing this guy's ceiling. Um, love the matchup for him against Washington. So he's one of my favorite tournament plays. Uh, let's see here. Is anybody else I want to mention? No, I think that does it. Um, other shooting guard stuff. Luke Kennard is a little bit more expensive here on DraftKings. Still think he's in play for tournaments, not a cash game play oh, over here on DK. Brandon Miller, I think is certainly a guy that you want to get in your cash games and, uh, love him in tournaments, even though he's coming with heavy ownership. Uh, I think the usage is going to be just outrageous in this spot. Uh, Anthony Edwards, if you're not going up for DeJounte Murray, is certainly a, a solid spend here with an awesome matchup against Toronto. Uh, Pat Connaughton um, with Middleton and Dame out should have a decent role here. Um, again, projected to start. If he's not starting, that, that projection comes down a little bit. Still okay for tournaments in that situation. Um, Bogdanovich is playable here on DraftKings. I think that does it for shooting guard. We will go ahead and kick it over to small forward. Um, if you like some of those other guys at shooting guard, Brandon Miller does have small forward eligibility, as does Anthony Edwards um, and Pat Connaughton. So mix and match those guys accordingly to how you need them to fit your lineups. Uh, Aaron Wiggins is an interesting option uh, as a cheap guy for the Thunder. Um, shorthand, obviously, without um, SGA and, and Jalen Williams again. Nikhil Alexander-Walker uh, without 
Uh, Mike Conley should have a, a more significant role here today. Jay Crowder with the shorthanded bucks as well. Um, that about does it there. At power forward, Grant Williams is, is grading out really well here on, on DK. Um, could, again, could see a usage bump here. Giannis is your cash game starting point. Um, love him in tournaments as well. Massively owned, but just a really shorthanded Bucks team. He does a little bit of everything, especially without Dame and Middleton. Uh, Crowder, I mentioned already. Nas Reed is an awesome tournament play, I think. Just a guy who can get it done so fast. Um, has been starting at, at the four here recently, so has been seeing more minutes. Um, I love Nas Reed in tournaments today. I uh, mentioned Poku as a value option over on FanDuel, uh, even cheaper here on DK. Let's see anybody else here. I think that does it at power forward. We'll go ahead and move it on to center. Uh, Vukovic is definitely a lock in your cash games. Uh, I think he's a strong tournament play as well. Uh, like unless you get foul trouble or an injury or something like that, like he's probably going to be out there for upper 20s minutes again. Uh, looks to be a pretty good point per minute guy. So I, I think you will don't run away from him in tournaments, even though he's going to be massively owned. There are a lot of cheap options to pivot to. Uh, Guillet is certainly one. Uh, Jalen Williams is another. He's a little bit more expensive than those two, um, but I mentioned the uh, additional run that he's been getting here recently. Um, hey, let me ask you this. You've said yes. this name twice. Is it Guillet or Guillet? Because if it's Guillet, that's a lock button. If it's Guillet, I don't know that we care. So I don't know officially. I've heard it both ways. So if if somebody knows the official pronunciation, I I think it's Guille. It's kind of a mixture of both. Like, Fade. Fade. <laughs> Fade. <laughs> more more analysis by last name, according to Cheese. Gotta love it. <laughs> I mean, if it's if we don't know for sure, then Cheese, you can say it however you want, and you know, then he's a lock button. So I think he's in. Guille. Yep. Lock. Guille. It is. <laughs> uh, any other thoughts there at at center ice? Yeah, just a couple tournament ones. Yep. Aiton is, is a guy with multiple tags. The matchup against uh, Charlotte is incredible, so certainly love spending up at center, flipping the build. A lot of people are paying down twice at center on DraftKings. Spending up for a guy like Aiton, um, lots of experts on that. I certainly agree with that strategy. Um, mentioned Nas Reed. He's playable. You're playing Nas Reed at, at power forward, actually. Um, yeah, I, I think that about covers it. Don't have anything else. Okay, we want to get some questions, of course. But first, we should note uh, that if you haven't signed up for Rotogrinders Premium, there's literally never been a better time to get it done. NBA, PGA, NCAA, basketball, NHL, MMA, MLB, uh, everything happening right now. Get yourself a six-month combo subscription at an exclusive price of $469.99. It is a savings of $250 as opposed to doing it individually month by month. So save yourself 250 bucks. You should obviously be doing that. You can also give Combo Premium a test run with a three-day pass. That's $19.99 if you're just looking to kind of test the waters a little bit, see how you like it, and I think you will love it. So make sure you're checking that out here as well. We got some uh, some fantastic content that is free, but the real, you know, the, the engines that, that run this whole machine are behind the paywall, and I highly recommend you get access to those. Cheese, we've got, uh, what, five minutes until some baseball lock? Is there anything that you would like? No, nah, it's just just the one game, uh, the, that Pirates-Nationals game, which um, I like the bats, and you sounds like you think we can play the bats. Even if they get a delay, we're probably okay. But even if we don't, I mean, if we get seven innings of a game and then, oh, well, like, I mean, if that's not a high probability, oh, well. So I'm, I'm playing yeah. bats in that game. Okay. Uh, Dean pointing out on the name analysis that your boy Sandro Mamukalashvili dropped a double double last night, cheese, after you were talking him up. <laughs> mama say, mama say, mama. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's see what we got. Jumping into uh, Chinatown says, Can I get a quick weather recap? Hey, where you been? I've given like four of them. Sure, <laughs> I'll give one final weather recap. Um, in DC, I fully expect that they start on time. I think they get half of, at least, probably more likely two-thirds of, if not the entire game in, before rain moves in. Uh, so we'll say a chance for a delay in the later innings of that game. My lean is that they'd come back out and finish it after maybe a 90-minute delay or so, but that's not a lock, especially if it's a blowout and the game's already over and it's the eighth inning or so. Um, but I would think they'd be able to finish that up. In Chicago, they've just finally cleared. It's finally dry, basically for the first time all day. It's dry in Chicago. 
All that is left upstream are these spotty showers that are going to move in and move out more off than on kind of showers. So they're mostly dry from this point on, but there will still be light rain. Um, and it's cold and it's windy. The fact that they haven't postponed it and that it's finally dry, like this is as good as it gets. This is the weather they were hoping for. And now they have it. So I don't know why they would postpone now. So that's my thought in Chicago. They could still do it. I don't know. They could still do it. It's absolutely horrid weather. But my lean is that they've waited this long and they've got the weather that is as good as it could be tonight. They're going to play. Um, that's it. Let's take some more QQs. Um, con contrarian spend up ice is a hoops. Hoops question here. Contrarian spend up on AD and FanDuel single entry with absolutely nobody who can guard him. Yeah, absolutely love that. Awesome spot for AD. Okay. FanDuel single entry GPP NBA with so much value. What team and or value pieces will you be overweight and underweight on? That's a really good question and kind of a difficult one. But are there some of these like chalk value guys that you either love or maybe are, are trying to get under the field on? I mean, it's it's really tough to say because there's like they're just they're so cheap in great situations. I think Vukovic is going to be the highest owned, and I think he's the the safest, most solid value play. Um, like just seeing what he did last night. Now he's confirmed in the starting lineup. Like we don't even know for sure that Guye is is starting yet. So. Like, I think there's a lot more risk with Gouye than there is with Vukovic. Um, so as among the cheap centers, I definitely prefer Vukovic. Um, I do think that uh, Jalen Smith is interesting as, as a pivot if you're trying to go underweight on, on both of them. Um, Trey Mann, like, he's 5,500. You're taking away, like, an upper 20% usage um Miles Bridges, so like he's going to have a ton of usage. And Micic is not there, so his minutes floor is really high. Again, and again, just really good chalk, in my opinion. So Brandon Miller is going to have 30% plus usage in this spot. I, it's a long way of saying, like, I think the chalk is good. Make one or two pivots per lineup, but don't try to go, like, completely off the board. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Uh, FanDuel Cash, more hoops, Monte Morris or Connaughton? Give me Connaughton. All right, let me scroll up a little bit and jump into the old YouTube chat here. If you haven't hit the thumbs up yet, uh, I am personally offended, and you still have time. You could and should. Uh, Ice thoughts on quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, really tough matchup against Minnesota, but show, so shorthanded. If Toronto's going to keep this game close, it's probably going through him. So I'd, I'd play Anthony Edwards on the other side of that if I'm doing it. Okay, we're going to make this a dual sport question, even though I don't know if it was. It is your favorite stack in a large field tournament. That's probably baseball, but Ice, I want you to go first because I've got a couple cheese questions coming up. So your favorite stack, whether it's a game stack, your favorite team to load up on. Yeah, I mean, Charlotte is so shorthanded. They're the team, and it's not comfortable because they could literally score 90 points tonight. Um they're playing a really bad team in Portland as well. There's only a one point spread, one and a half point spread in that game. So I feel like the Charlotte stuff is good. The Brandon Miller um, and um, Trey Mann, like those, I think they're just way too cheap for the role that they're going to have tonight. And Portland's not a team that I'm afraid of. So give, give me Charlotte, Portland. Okay, great. With uh, Bam, geez, same question would be my favorite Portland guy or Aiden. Sorry. Okay, that's fair. Uh, cheese, DK tournament, your favorite uh, stack. Uh, the Do Dodgers. There's a large that's, field tournament. That sounds chalky. They're not the chalk because okay. of the salaries. Great. Great. Uh, let's see. Can we play the Cubs bats, cheese? Is this a weather question or is this a... Yeah, if it's a... Assuming it's not a weather question, yes, they're still stackable because it's the kind of slate... Like, if the Dodgers don't go off, you don't necessarily need a team that scores 15 runs with five homers. Like, And they can still string together a ton of hits and score runs. So yes, I, I think a, a cup stack is, is extremely viable. Okay. Uh, Daniel pointing out that chocolate chip cookies and a highball cocktail is a winning combo. That's, that's good. I think a highball is whiskey and soda. Is that, am I asking the wrong crew? Not I know geez. what chocolate chip cookies are for sure. <laughs> yeah. I think you're correct on that, but I'm not positive. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll give it a shot, Daniel. Thank you. 
okay, John says, I you want, uh, now he says Vuk and Edwards, or maybe he means Vooch and Ed. Are they both on the slate? Or no? no, Nicola oh, is not on the slate. Yeah. If that, <laughs> that ever would happens, be a nightmare. Uh, I'm just out. <laughs> yep. I'm out. Uh, Vuk and Edwards or Joe and Aiton? Uh, first one. Uh, e. Kim says, I'm playing Wemby tonight, and he's not even on the slate. He's still going for 45 DK points. <laughs> Makes uh, sense. I like it. Uh, thoughts on my guy, Derek White, who, by the way, is the best defending guard in the NBA. Uh, thoughts on Derek White, the best defending guard in the NBA? Boston has locked up the number one seed. They don't have a ton to play for, so I just – like the ceilings are – questionable to me um i i think i think we need to wait for the playoffs or another rest spot for boston yeah okay uh best cheese peter says best dk outfielder 35 hundo or less you mentioned the need to get down to some of those cheaper outfielders uh tonight yeah at 35 or less like unfortunately it's Swinsky's 37 and he's the chalk i think Probably Eddie Rosario, although he just locked. So if you missed out on that, um, there's not actually that much there because you also missed Michael Taylor. I would, even though I prefer him at second, I'd say Kevin Biggio. Okay. Uh, Mr. Richard says, best value as of now, DK single entry GPP in hoops. I should start with in hoops so that one of you can tune out. That's my bad. Uh, Ice in hoops, DK single entry, your favorite value. Yeah, it's Vukovic. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, mm -hmm. Thoughts on coups? Any interesting coups? Not really. Revenge going, uh, getting LA, but no. Yeah. He's right. fine, but I, I'm not. He's not one of my favorite spends on the slate. Okay. Ice Fanduel single entry two studs. You're plugging in the lineup uh, with value to make it happen. Yeah, plenty of value to make it happen. Going up for two studs is is absolutely viable. Um, Giannis is the clear top option, but I do like the pivot to Anthony Davis. Um, and then I will go for the second one. Give me Anthony Edwards. Nice. We'll go to Fluff's question. Four, nine, and under point guard or shooting guard on FanDuel ice. Uh, I've already got Nard. I already got the Nard dog. Four, nine, point or shooting guard FanDuel. FanDuel, 49... Point guard, shooting guard. Um, let's see here. Uh, Alexander Walker. Very nice. Uh, we are kind of coming to the end of the questions here. Dean dropping the lineup here for San Francisco. Cheese. Uh, Lee, Wade, Soler, Conforto, Chapman, Estrada, Yasmin Maduski, Bailey, and Ahmed. Is that as expected? Yeah, that doesn't change anything um playing mostly glass now but by all means throw in um a just in case giant stack um and you can just play the the top of the order and not mess around okay uh achilles says i need to know how does one eat mac and cheese cheeseburgers pizza carne asada uh without cheese you eat cheese with things. You just don't love cheese alone. I the the rule for me is I don't put cheese on things that don't need cheese on them to be good. So and I don't eat just cheese by itself. But like yeah. pizza is not pizza without cheese, nor is yes. mac and cheese mac and cheese without cheese. I like hamburgers more than cheeseburgers because a hamburger is a hamburger without mm -hmm. cheese. Pasta is pasta without cheese. A salad is a salad without cheese. Um yeah, that's yeah. that's how I do it. I honestly perfectly explained. Yeah, so I I get it. I feel that. Um, I you know I disagree. You know because cheese should go on everything in my mind. But sure, I, and I understand I, that that argument for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's an argument, right? <laughs> I understand your point of view. Yeah. Uh, Keith, uh, where did it go? How confident are you that the newest Monte Morris projection holds? Um. Let me do a refresh here. By the way, people love that take, Cheese. <laughs> You've clearly <laughs> given this much thought. I wholeheartedly agree. This is the best take ever. <laughs> I have I have thought about this, yeah, to try to explain. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad it, it makes sense whether you yeah. agree or not. 30 minutes. We moved him into the starting lineup. Did someone get rolled out here? Um Conley's been out, right? 
We had it for like 18 and it just got up to 30. Go ping Um, your people. Magic. Yeah. Let me see if I can find out some information there. Yep. All right. Well, we'll still hang out. Um, Let's see. Uh, Let's get here. See if there's any baseball. A lot of, a lot of hoops questions coming your way. Cheese. I'm sorry that you're hanging out with us. Uh, I'm having honestly a fantastic time. <laughs> that's, that's great, man. Uh, can you play AD and Giannis together? Yes, yeah, there's certainly enough value to be able to do that tonight. I like that. Um, and I do have an answer here. There was a quote from head coach Chris Finch that said he's excited to see Monte Morris play with a different group of guys tonight. So my assumption would be that Morris starts in Conley in Conley spot tonight. That was from Dane Moore, uh, one of the top. Uh, Minnesota beat reporter. So that's why he was moved into the starting lineup. And the only way his projection changes from here, I would think is if for some reason he doesn't start, but if mm-hmm. he's in the starting lineup, that's his projection. Okay. It would be kind of funny if he meant like, cause he's only playing with the third string scrubs <laughs> in a blowout. <laughs> like, oh, we took that the wrong way. Um, all right. Let's see more QQs projections on DeJounte uh, Ant-Man or DeJounte straight up FanDuel single entry ice. Close one. Um, give me Ant Man. Better matchup for Dejounte, but I like Ant tonight. Okay, Daryl George with the question. Cheese all the way from South Carolina. A Yahoo Cash question. I just yeah. love that he says that. Uh, is it, it. I'm targeting the Chalky Dodgers with uh, Kyle Harrison and strikeouts. Am I crazy? In cash, absolutely yes. That's that sounds like the worst possible way to go. Honestly. Um, stacking against your pitcher in cash is, is I cannot recommend that. Okay. All right. Uh, Anthony says thoughts on Cade and Aiton ice Cade and Aiton. And I'm jumping back in the discord. We got about five minutes left. Yeah. I think they're both really strong tournament plays. FanDuel cash question. Three V three, uh, ice Denny, Jalen Vuk or Na Gil and Aiton. First one. Uh, FanDuel 3v3 single entry. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Vuk, Bertans, and Giddy, or J. Lynn, Kennard, and Scoop. And note Isaiah Jackson instead of J. Lynn if he's starting. Um, give it to me one more time. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Uh, Vuk, Bertans, Giddy, or J. Lynn, Kennard, Scoop. I'll go the first one there. Uh, question for cheese from Dean. What about cheese and crackers? Yay or nay? I think you're a nay on cheese and crackers. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a nay. Although I fully support people eating that. Like when I see people eating cheese and crackers, I think that is, those people are probably enjoying their life, but I don't, <laughs> I don't like it. And I actually just like plain crackers, honestly. You, you do, or you do not like plain crackers? I, I do. Oh, okay. Yeah. You just, wow. All right. That's a wild Now the best, the thing. best case scenario is if you have graham crackers with icing. <laughs> what are you looking for like Dunkaroos? Like, what? Jesus. <laughs> how old are you? <laughs> you just is that is just a thing that you sometimes have. You're like, oh, let me get it's, some graham crackers. Uh, and ice cream. Well, <laughs> I haven't had that in so long, and now like I really want that. So I'm gonna. Have it sounds good. Sure. Yeah, I don't definitely. think I have that sitting around, but I can make it happen. Okay. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, Blink 182 <laughs> NBA QQ for you. Ivy and Trent, uh, excuse me, Ivy or Trent Jr. on a large field DK GPP. Uh, I'll go Trent there. Um, Matthew says we need cheese is good on every show from now on, even before baseball season. He just wants you on during the NBA just to be I there. Mean, for I, I think picks. I think Keith wants me on all the NBA shows. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely, these uh, added takes are incredible. Yeah. Uh, Joaquin says, I still have this <laughs> image. I forgot about this. <laughs> frozen face. <laughs> uh, if you didn't see it. It's remarkable like, that, I, that I'm alive uh, to be on any show. <laughs> last year during a live show. Uh, I, I wonder if we can pull it up. If I don't know. We might be asking a lot here. Yeah. Um, a thunderstorm hit. Like a lightning bolt basically hit Cheese's house in the middle of it the hit show. The, it <laughs> hit the backyard of the house next door like i had the tree that i could see from right here like it's crazy 
and his I felt reaction, the shock go up <laughs> my chair, the back of my chair, and <laughs> it did not go well. <laughs> it, but it looked as if someone had just kicked in the door with an axe, like ready to murder him. His face was just, <laughs> it was amazing. Um, it was one of the greatest still images and reactions of all time. And I'm sorry, because <laughs> I'm sure it was freaking terrifying, but getting to see that reaction was truly, truly incredible. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll be able to find it. It's it's around. It's somewhere. Uh, okay, back to the question. Sorry, FanDuel single entry. Last piece, Nah or Krejci, Krejci uh, at small forward or somebody else in that price range. I, I like Nah. Okay. Uh, I've got 5,500 left. At a small forward spot, FanDuel single entry. Give me the play, please. FanDuel single entry, 5,500? Yes. Uh, let's see. Beasley, probably. McDaniels, okay. if you don't like Beasley. Okay. Uh, more food takes, but uh, Daryl did want to clarify that Yahoo cash question all the way from South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, he is... Fading the chalky Dodgers and playing the opposing pitcher for the strikeout upside, is he still crazy? I think okay. so because it's cash. So, yeah, the question makes more sense. And, I, I mean, so you're no longer, like, off the wall crazy. Personally, I don't like that at all in cash, and I wouldn't do it. But, yeah, I mean, I understand the basis for it now with that with yeah. a question like that. But that's, that's not what I would do tonight, no. Okay. Uh, Billy Magliani, my guy, he's from Jersey, or at least I like to pretend he is, says, any Poku – uh, in single entry on DK. You got any Poku? Yeah, I mean, for single entry, yeah, I, I think he's totally fine. He's still under 4K. Um, like I said, if, if Bertans doesn't get up into the upper 20s today, I think Poku could. So I, I like it, even in single entry. Okay. Matthew wants your thoughts on mozzarella sticks, like, you know, uh, fried cheese sticks, um, mac and cheese balls, and cheese curds. Cheese curds you got to be out on. There's no way. Yeah, there's no yeah. – like, I think it's fascinating that they exist. I really do. Um, but, oh, my goodness, if, like, mm -hmm. what in the world? No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have I have never tried or even know if I've even seen a fried mac and cheese ball. I, I, I assume are we – it's like mac and cheese just fried up and, like, it, so it looks like a hush puppy, but it's mac and cheese inside? Is that that, that's right. About? They're they're – a little much, honestly. You eat them and you're like, okay. I'm not sure I needed all of this fatness okay. in my mouth. I mean, once. yeah, I can't say because I've never had it. I'm not a mozzarella cheese stick guy. That's kind of mm -hmm. like cheese and crackers. I fully support it and, yeah. and I get it. Uh, but uh, no, I don't I don't like that. Yeah. Okay. That's that's about where uh, where I thought you'd stand on that. Uh, FanDuel 3v3 in Cash Ice Edwards, Patty C, and Gouillet, or Henderson, Dort, and Grant Williams. First one, easily. DK GPP, I scoot and Miller. Uh, I have Mann and Bertans already for Charlotte. Yeah, adding Miller to that's fine. Okay, uh, we do have the image. Dean has has put it in the chat. If you would like to to see it, it is right there. Um, let's see. I'm playing Henderson and Blanton together. Ice uh, in a large DraftKings tournament is that silly? I don't think it's silly. Like, there's some correlation. Like, if Portland just scores a bunch of points, like, I, th I think they can get there together. Um, maybe slight negative correlation, but I think you're just betting on Portland having a solid game overall, so I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay. Hey, guess what we've done? We've hit the lock. Uh, we might have one or two more questions. Just one. Um, just two. It's from the same person. All right, Fluff. Giddy versus Cam Thomas, Ice, FanDuel. Giddy. And then uh, Monte, if starting, versus Connaughton, if starting on FanDuel. On FanDuel. I think I'll go Monte there. Okay. Very nice. Uh, with that, I think we're going to bounce on out of here. So, good stuff, as always. Wonderful, wonderful show. Both cheese and ice. Uh, for cheese, for ice. For our wonderful production crew. Always working hard behind the scenes. Guys, we appreciate you. We love you. And we will catch you tomorrow. You have been.